Welcome back to Legends of Avantress. Today we have episode two of a very special mini arc sponsored by Studio Agate. We will be playing their brand new game, Tainted Grail, Song of a Dying World. It's set in the Arthurian dark fantasy world of Avalon, where its people must resist a deadly fog and danger around every corner. Make sure you check out the link in the description to back their GameFound campaign and pre-order your copy today. And of course, while you're doing that, I'm gonna kick it over to Mike to read some comments from last week's episode. Take it away. The response has been amazing from our campaign premiere. Thank you so much. And so make sure to leave your own comment. I'm gonna read some from our campaign premiere, session one. I loved all the voices and great DMing, Andy. It was fantastic. Can't wait until the next episode. Andy DMing? I never thought I'd see the day. Loved every second of this. Can't wait for more. Only a mini series, but if you guys wanted to full send it into a full series, I'd love it. I love unorthodox game systems and settings. Like Stardust Rhapsody goes so hard, <laughs> and I've been itching to find slash see another Fate game. Can I adopt Andy as my grandmother? <laughs> I love this Andy's GMing is amazing. Uh, this world feels so real and impressive. I love the characters. Uh, also, can we just appreciate Andy's rolling R's? Amazing, so nice to hear. <laughs> Andy did such a good job with the DMing on this. I watched this live, but I've rewatched it like eight times and I need more. The story is amazing, the character dynamics adorable, and the DMing, oh my God, the DMing is absolutely fantastic. No, I'm against it. Andy can't also be a good DM. Come on, man. How is this fair to any other role play group out there? <laughs> so thank you so much for leaving your comments. You Leave kind. your comments on this video as well, and maybe we'll read it for our campaign finale next week. Ooh. Thank you so much, Mike. So join us as we brave the weirdness and search for the Tainted Grail. A century has passed since humanity was broken by the fall of Avalon. The mists of the witness and their ores poured over our lands and swept us away. Once again, our civilization was wiped out. To survive, we hid in fear and fog. We, the heirs of Arthur, have waited for our time. And now it's finally coming. As the witness retreats, hope is reborn. New heroes rise and hold high the banner of our ancestors. The people of Avalon bravely step into the mists to reforge their kingdom. Together we face the colossal fall dwellers and the illusions of the weirdness. The reconquest of our island begins. Last time, on episode one of Tainted Grail, we joined our heroes, our unlikely heroes, in the small farming village of Briarbrook. They were doing what they do most nights of the week, drinking at the public house, playing cards, discussing life. This night was different than the others. You were preparing for an epic adventure. You knew what laid ahead of you as you needed to set out to hopefully find the knowledge or perhaps a new place to live to save the people that you've grown to care about so much over the years after laying down roots in the small farming settlement. It wasn't an easy decision you know that more often than not, the people that stray from Briarbrook don't ever return. But these people had been so kind to you. You felt almost as if it was your calling, like you owed it to them. After the villagers saw you off and wished you well, you met the Mistfarer, Leo. Wise, experienced, agile, and eager to make some coin, and also aid you on your quest to find the largest city in Avalon, Camelot. It was a grueling journey, especially for the three of you who are more or less retired in many ways. Uh, you were shaking off the rust, getting back to what it was like to be on the road uh, and not doing 
simple tasks like farming and overseeing uh, people who needed your help. It was smooth going at first, with some minor hiccups here and there, uh, but you saw, you saw it through. Uh, you saw each other through. In an unfortunate turn of the wind, the mists, mid-morning, halfway through your adventure, got unusually thick. And for the first time in your lives, you were encountered uh, with a four-dweller. A horrific 12, maybe 15 foot tall armored creature. Humanoid, maybe, with four arms. Large weapons hanging at, at its side. All Leo could do was scream a warning to run before he was torn asunder before your very eyes. You heeded his warning and took off following his advice for how to continue on to Camelot without him. And it wasn't long at all before you were on the trail and you found the final landmark, the Broken Men Here Stone. You had one final obstacle in your path as brigands, uh, a group of, of, of bandits who often stake out near this area, hoping to catch wearied travelers, those who have tr gone, you know, traversed through the weirdness and have been worn down by all of the different things that you've encountered. Uh, they were hoping to steal what little you might have had, uh, not knowing that amongst all of you, you didn't have much money, you didn't have any kind of magical artifacts, your, your equipment, your weapons, your armor are not particularly well made in general. Uh, you, you had, you know, left from a, a small, poor farming village. Uh, it was a vicious battle. Some of you had taken severe wounds, but again, you, the brothers that you are, came together and helped each other out and were able to overcome the vicious assault. You found some things on them and proceeded to the edge of the forest and it was then that you realized your luck was turning for the better. The mists began to clear, the trees slowly began to thin, and it wasn't long before the forest turned into sprawling fields and meadows as far as the eye can see. Several miles out, as the sun was shining on your faces for the first time in many days, you could see the beautiful walls of Camelot. You have all but made it. You are tired, you are wounded, you are battered and bruised, you are low on food and supplies. You have a little bit of money, but most importantly, you have your destination in view. To steal uh, from a wonderful DM who DMs from me all the time, what happens next <laughs> is up to you. <clears throat> you're, you're several miles away from Camelot, but you can see it very clearly. It, it looks like, almost like heaven to you. Help me paint a picture of the city proper in my mind. Are we talking like tall white walls and like a huge tall like spiry uh, Lord of the Rings Eats style operation or is it flat and wide and dark? Like I'm inspired by the site because I've never seen a city this size, but I'm trying to picture it in my mind. Good question. Yes, so from what you can see, uh, again, several miles out, this is probably the largest city that you have ever seen. Easily. Um, it's, it's, some of you may have even been near Camelot or into it before, but some of you definitely have not. Uh, the walls are very tall. Uh, you may not have even seen, Balto specifically, <coughs> may not have even seen walls like this ever. Uh, they are light. They're, they're maybe not maybe not exactly white, but they're, they're they're very bright in color. The sun seems to reflect off these these stone walls. Uh, there are some spires and pointed uh, tall towers that almost look like maybe mages' towers or something along those lines. Um, but it's it's big. Uh, but what you have to keep in mind is that you know uh, is that Avalon is not a very populous <laughs> island. So even though that this is the largest city in uh, Avalon. You know that Camelot is really only home to a few hundred people. Granted that we're talking, you know, tens and uh, tens of times bigger than than 
you know, the, the small farming village of Briarbrook that you've come from, that you've lived in for decades. Um, but even as far as major, major cities go, there aren't that many people here in the kingdom of Camelot. Hmm. Um, but yeah, you'll see various uh, various towers and buildings peeking up from behind these these giant walls. Um, it, it's almost radiant in the sun, and I, I think what you would notice almost initially is that the weirdness in the fog does not touch this place yeah. for miles and miles. It is sprawling, beautiful fields and meadows uh, until you start to get to the hill that Camelot is sitting on. It is, it is raised in elevation from the rest of the uh, from the rest of these f f fields and, and meadows. And what you'll notice too is that as you start to get closer and closer, there are pathways and small uh, little huts that kind of uh, lie in these pathways that you think might be guard huts. Oh. Checkpoints. I never thought I'd be happy to see the walls of Camelot. You've been inside. No. I always sent envoys. Never have the time to enjoy the luxury of Camelot, nor the interest. Well, uh, despite fighting for him for a few decades, never felt the need to get invited. Never had the, uh, the honor. But now's the time. Hopefully you can talk our way into there. I know how these people It'll be effortless. The very least, we can bribe them. But we need to hold on to as much coin as we can. We need a room and a flagon of a good gold. What about you? You've never been. This is the largest settlement I've ever seen. I am intimidated by the prospect of being in such a built place. They don't have cities like that on the continent. None that are still populated. Fucking ruins, I've heard. Wiped out by the Red Death. Entirely. It's why I fled to Avalon. Well, this, you'll find at Camelot that the welcome we'll receive perhaps will be better very slightly than a haunted ruin. Do we have to do anything special when we get there, or, or, or to get in? Let me do the talking. Yeah. I'm tired of fucking walking. I need to sit down, I need a good bed. Maybe a feather bed. Do so you need some help? I'm happy to assist you to the city. I'll look down my... My old wound is the leg that he stabbed me in, so I'm very clearly in deep pain, and I will very much hesitate, as I will be very grateful that my uh, my surcoat was not pierced nor stained with blood, uh, as I will just slowly nod um, and uh, put my my one arm not on the cane on your shoulder. All right, my lord, and I'm going to try to kind of get under him and sure. sort of walk with him uh, to ease his his his. Well, yeah, careful like, now, I'm not your fucking grandmother. <laughs> oh, you're gonna be all right. Oh, there you go, one foot in front of the other. When, when we find a place to rest, I will look again, and I will see if I can do anything, not just for yourself, but also for me. And I'm, I'm looking around and taking in the sights and looking at the fields and trying to determine if what, what, what might be different here, what's growing. My eyes are just going a million miles a second. I'll look at, at uh, Kristoff and I'll say, Reiner, you look like shit. He beat the shit out of your face. Maybe you should ask Bolto for a hand. Uh, hand me ribs. Oh, hand me back. Uh, fucking blackjack. Oh, more effective than I would have thought. Well, these men are not known t to avoid dirty fighting. Well, neither am I. It is a shame that we had to kill the boys. I was hoping it would not have to come to that. It may not feel like it now, but better to be feeling 
the pain than none at all. Ten years ago, I wouldn't uh, have been this beat up. Fuck. Uh, I'm not as spry as I used to be. Ten years ago, I could have had him seized and hanged like the thugs that they are. Let us not dwell on the decades past. And you're having these conversations as you proceed towards Camelot, and you, you're you taking your time. I, it's, it's very clear that you're all beat up and not used to this. And it isn't long before you uh, find a little footpath that <coughs> clearly leads straight ahead uh, as you head north to, the, to, the, to this major city. And you, uh, you are start to approach a small little uh, a shack, uh, which you know to be a guard. A guard's hut, a checkpoint, if you will. Uh, and you're maybe a hundred feet away as you're approaching, as as you see one of the guards, uh, fully clad in armor, with with a with a long uh, spear, uh, pike, if you will. And uh, he steps out of the shack and he gives you a once over. He looks at you all as you're as you're limping and, and walking up, and he says, "Well, well, you all look like hammered shit on your way to Camelot." <laughs> Yes, we are weary travelers simply passing through, looking for a place to convalesce for a few nights. As you get closer and closer, uh, it's, it's when you're about 20 feet away that he holds up his hand and says, Halt! Right there. One moment. No. And uh, he waits to see if you comply. I'll, I will, I'll, I'll stop. I'll uh, kind of raise my hand for us to stop. I'll, 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 I'll stop I'll and take a half back step off backwards. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So we're sort of, I'll, I'll let him do his thing, and I'll take a step back. I assure you, we are not highwaymen. We are good people <coughs> that follow the path of the All Mother. Right, right, that's clear enough. Uh, one by one, quick check for Red Death. <gasps> Who's first? Step up. I, uh, I, I look to I'll nod. Jasper to... Oh, I, I, no Red Death at all, no, no. Uh, Come forward. I'll lean, I'll lean forward and immediately start to sort of show my eyes, yeah, my he, tongue. He, 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 he sees what you're doing, and he, he's, he understands that you have uh, an understanding of this illness. And he quickly looks in your eyes. He seems pleased that you've taken the, uh, the, the time to know what needs to be done, and he gives you a quick check over. He doesn't see that your eyes look off. He checks your throat and your tongue. He, looks, he checks you over for lesions or any open wounds and sores. All right, good. Pass. Who's next? I will very clearly, I would have been tense the whole time that as soon as Bolto stepped up, knowing that he's from the continent. And I don't know if they probably, if guards would presume that people from the continent are more likely to have to bring the Red Death. But as soon as he lets him go, I'll let up. Uh, and I will lean heavily on my cane and I'll say, Kristoff, you next. All right, my lord. I'll walk up. I'll, you know, yep. show him whatever he needs all to. All right, all right, stick out your tongue. Uh, uh, show me eyes, all right, all right. Yeah. Good, you're good, clear. Last one. I'll walk through. Uh, I will uh, walk up to uh, him slowly, uh, wincing with pain probably with each step, as I'll try to force a smile and I'll say, with how much wine I drink, I think the Red Death would drown before it could infect me. He, he looks at your smile and he does not return it. He doesn't seem to appreciate yeah. the humor. Come on. Show me arms. You'll have to forgive me. It's all right. And uh, he's not rough with you. He's he's stern uh, and no nonsense, but he's not rough. He doesn't seem to be uh, have any ill will or, or, or you know, lack of patience. And he, he's respectful. Yeah, right. exactly. He checks your tongue. He looks at your eyes. All right. You're all clear. Uh, rest of the guard towers won't stop you. Enjoy Camelot. Stay out of trouble. We'll try and we will. Thank you, my man. And, and you're free to continue on. I, uh, I'll get back to, to Christoph and put my, my hand on. All right. Here we go. All right. That was painless. I am glad that they are testing for the Red Death. I was going to say, I mean, you have one case under those walls and the whole fucking city's gone. In old country, they make it into the city, one, by blinding himself and... Drinking wax to cover the sores on tongue. And he infected everyone? He was hungry. 
and many died. See, that was what I was worried about. One of the lords that I, that my liege lord would occasionally war against over claims of land, was known for taking in refugees from the continent and then burning them as soon as they approach the castle walls. When the Red Death comes, there can be no negotiation. Well, that's a house that should have been exiled and stripped of their lands. And you had to fucking live through that for years. Just the fucking plague everywhere. My old childhood and into my 20s before I finally, finally managed to make my way onto a ship. Yes, I dealt with it. I tried to heal the sick. There are ways to relieve things if they get really nasty, but the resources to create remedies and medicine are few. I laid with a girl for a summer who was from the continent. She, uh, she said it was some entire towns, cities, everyone just vanished, disappeared, just because they were all gone. That sounds like very pleasant pillow talk. Can we please continue? Yes, let's... All right, up the pace then. And you do. As you get closer, you pass a couple more guard towers, uh, uneventful. They nod. They know that if you've made it this far, you've been checked. And they don't, they don't accost you or stop you in any way. As you're getting closer and the walls are getting bigger and bigger uh, as you're approaching Camelot, it becomes evident that the stone uh, that these walls are constructed out of have all these very intricate runic carvings in them. These aren't just normal walls. Uh, it, it kind of reminds you of the symbology that was carved into the small tokens that you received from Sasha. Not the same symbols, just it gives you the same feeling, the same vibe. It, it, you get the idea that these uh, runes that are carved directly into the walls of Camelot are what are helping keep the city safe from the weirdness. Uh, it may be a different type of magic. It might be wizardry. It might not be druidic in nature. You're not sure. Um, but you are, you're, you're very certain that the, the, the markings on the walls are very purposeful. Do they seem just architecturally embedded into the stone or are they like humming with magic and glowing and doing this whole thing? Or is it, are they like moss covered and just present as a feature on the face of these walls? Closer to the latter. They're definitely not glowing and humming. It, it looks as if somebody has like almost chiseled them in. Um, and yeah, there would maybe be some, some you know, uh, foliage that has kind of collected like some mosses mm -hmm. and things. Uh, it's not radiating, it's not humming, you're not feeling anything, uh, especially from this far away. Okay. Uh, but it's just a very distinguishing feature. It of, just of reminds the me of, of the Sasha's room. Yes. Okay. Yeah, a little bit. Cool. Uh, again, not the same symbols, but you get the same vibe. I'm in awe of a uh, wall this size. I'm like almost scared that it's gonna fall on me. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 physically imposing. Uh, you know, it's it's kind of a miracle that uh, you you know you feel that it's almost a miracle that humans were able to build this uh, with how many humans are actually on Avalon, right? Um, it's 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 intimidating. And as you approach the south gate, uh, it is open, and uh, they are welcoming you in. You you are not. Uh, to be stopped by the guards again. Uh, they're not in any kind of state of uh, emergency or alarm. Uh, the, the, the southern gate is open, and the guards uh, see you again and nod and, and, and uh, essentially welcome you into the city. So many people in one place. This is like a festival night, but in every direction I see. As you're, as you're nearing the gate, you can start to hear the din, uh, you know, of people talking, of people bartering, of people laughing. Uh, yelling. It's, there's, there's life here. And it's, you all might feel differently, right? You might all feel differently from each other about how you feel about this, this, this bustling life, whether it's overwhelming or, or joyous or not. Oh, it's, it's a lot of people. It'll be fine. Too many fucking people, as far as I'm concerned. Why do you need these many fucking people in one place? <laughs> so that there can be trade and exchange of ideas and exchange of coin. Maybe the occasional exchange of the plague. The only time I've ever seen this many people in one place is on the battlefield. But 
Are you concerned about being recognized from your back from your noble exile? I hope I am. I won't hide who I am any longer. I've been far too long in exile, wasting away. I, from what I understand, the rumors that I died drinking myself to death. We will be at your side, if you are. So maybe it'll be as if they've seen a ghost. I propose that we find a nice inn. How does one do this? Well, we see where the people who are dressed the nicest and smell the best, where are they traveling? Certainly not in this street. Let's continue. I am beginning to understand what you mean by smell. As you heed Jasper's advice and, and you recognize that you will need to find a place to stay, uh, to rest and heal, um, you proceed deeper into the opening gate of this city for the first time. Yes. I have 20 obols. Did anyone else have any, tw- any, any, we, we, we stole, I, we 40. I gave you the, shit. I believe Did it was write 20, it I believe it was another 23. So, so 43. 43 total. We have 43 obols. You have all the obols. Yes. Yep. Um, is that what it's called, they're obols? Obols, obols. yes. Obols. obols. All yeah. I've got is my rations and my herbs. Um, and it isn't long at all before you kind of walk, stumble into, almost accidentally, the main thoroughfare. There are uh, permanent stalls erected on this main thoroughfare, but it's very obvious that people come and go on a daily basis to set up their goods and sell things. Uh, There are bards, poets, people singing, playing instruments. There's a juggler. Somebody might be, uh, you know, doing tricks for coin, uh, trying to to, um, entice people to to enjoy simple parlor tricks. Uh, some this might be baffling to some of you. You might have never seen uh, what looks like, you know, uh, a, a tiny, a small circus. He, a couple never, of people he in never drops. I uh, here, even a better strategy. Watch and learn. I will find the nicest dressed bard that I can, and I will approach him. It's not hard. Uh, you find a gentleman who is standing there strumming a lute and he's singing loudly and in between songs he's thanking people and waving his hat and, and collecting coin and uh, it's very easy to find him. Um, I will approach him and I will say, I will I will listen um, and uh, I will uh, smile and I will say, good singer. Uh, and what would, what, would I, what would I think is a good like tip for a bard? Two, one uh, obol, two obols. Yeah, couple a couple ob- obols. Couple obols. Would be, I'll would take, be very generous. I will take three obols. Ooh, okay. I will take three, so we are now at forty. And uh, you have a wonderful singing voice. You must, you must be invited to all of the grandest houses of the nobility, perhaps even royalty, and have a welcome place on a stool in all of the finest inns and taverns of the city. Well, well, thank you. Uh, it's very obvious that you have a fine eye and even better ear. I do. I've heard many bards that have come to call at my castle, and none have a voice as mournful and yet sweet as yours. Oh, you are too kind, sir. You're too kind. Well, if you're looking for further entertainment, you can certainly find me playing later tonight at the Queen's Respite. The Queen's Respite? There are a few different inns and taverns here in Camelot, but the Queen's Respite is one of the finest. What is, is it, is there anything finer than the Queen's Respite? Not in Camelot. Do they have flagons of Albion gold there? Oh, the best. My good man, how about you join us there this evening and sing, I can guarantee you the clientele will be rewarding you. You'll be drowning in nobles with the tips that you'll receive. In the meantime, if you happen to, if you happen to sing, perhaps, in any of the company of wizards, misfarers, that deal in the workings of the Meneer Stone, we would be appreciative of what you find out. Well, as you previously mentioned, because my reputation precedes me, uh, it is true. 
I do sing for the nobles. I do sing for the court wizards. One in particular. I'm sure you've heard of him. The absolutely famous court wizard, Archibald Rast. That is exactly the kind of information we are very curious about. Only because we admire Archibald, you said. That's, that's correct. Yes, we know who he is and we are great admirers. Are you hoping to speak to him? If you have his ear, we would not turn down such an opportunity. Well, you've arrived in Camelot at the perfect time. In fact, tomorrow, the Queen of Avalon is hosting one of her open court dates. She's very kind in the way that she rules, but of course you know this. And she hears the grievances, her advisors will listen to the grievances of the people that she rules over and solve their problems. I'm sure that if you wanted to speak to Archibald, it wouldn't be a problem at all. You just have to convince her advisor. Oh yeah, all the rumors true about the queen. <laughs> what rumors, my good man? <gasps> the fact that she's unnaturally long-lived, let's say. Well, she's King Arthur's sister. Of course she's unnaturally long-lived. She's gifted by the gods, by divine right, to be the Queen of Avalon. Are you going on about the rumblings of witchcraft? The small folk will spread any rumor, no matter how fantastical it sounds. It's all they have, they have nothing else going on in their meager lives. <clears throat> I'm just wondering why Arthur and Merlin didn't get this gift from the gods. Well, as we all know, poor King Arthur, he was struck down. And Merlin, well, there's lots of rumors surrounding him, of course, but... Uh... Our wonderful Queen of Avalon, I like to think of it as the All Mother's Blessing. Right. All right, I need a rest. So I'll see you at the, uh, the Queen's Respite then? Yes, and when you arrive, I'd love to hear your rendition of the hair and the maiden fair. He gives you a wink and he says, consider it a date. Excellent, we will see you at the Queen's Respite. Oh, could you point us in the direction? It's been so long since I've been to this city. And he does, he gives you directions. Um, and for being a, a small populated city, it is still rather large, surprisingly large for only a few hundred people. Um, but uh, he gives you directions <coughs> and uh, you won't have any problem finding it. It is later in the afternoon uh, when you've arrived here in this kingdom. And uh, you basically know that you have a few more hours of, of sunlight um, to do what you'd ever, whatever you'd really like to do, whether it be to, to, to go directly to the Queen's Respite or take a look around at some other things. Um, but there aren't too many hours left in the day of sunlight before you need to find a place where you will, uh, rest up for the evening. One more thing, fair singer. Yes. What is, was your name? I don't believe I asked. I apologize. I have not been in a place of courtly manners in some time. Oh, well, of course. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure that my reputation precedes me, but for those of you who may forget, and he, he kind of addresses the crowd as he says this in a, in a loud, boisterous manner, I am Alexander Wilfred, greatest bard of Avalon. Well, Lord Wilfred, we will see you this evening. I'll see you soon. My luck. Stay out of trouble. And, uh... I will hobble off and uh, point, go in the direction that he pointed to the Queen's Respite. It's not hard. It's it's very easy for you guys to find this place if you choose to direct your head there. Um, however, whatever speed you'd like. I'm in awe of buildings with two stories, maybe three sometimes, uh, maybe even higher. Uh, uh, seeing storefront after storefront of, of, of uh, exotic goods that I can't uh, picture, uh, pastries that uh, would feed the entire village twice over, just in one window. I'm quiet as we walk through the uh, streets, just sort of aware of my two good friends and making sure that I stick close to them, fearing that I might get lost. As you're taking all of this in and you're, you're passing window for storefronts and, and different um, uh, permanent installations where people have set up their shops uh, for the day or maybe the week, 
you are seeing all manner of, of wonderful treats, food, uh, plants, botany, things that you may have never seen before. Uh, it's fascinating to you. you. You almost want to stop to, to look at every little thing that you're seeing, uh, but your companions might be pulling you along, urging you along to get to uh, lodging before, you know, the Queen's Rest potentially could be full for the, uh, the Queen's Respite could be full for the evening. Um, but it's hard. It's hard for them to pull you away because some of these things are so fascinating and new that you've, you've never experienced them before. Keep up, Balto. Surely you will not fall behind an old man with one good leg. There's so much here. How you could spend a lifetime here, I understand. But who would want to? I'll look around with distaste as uh, I uh, will proceed forward. I will be on edge, and I want to keep an eye out for any crows or ravens. Okay. Um, and I'll just sort of like be kind of like looking around, and probably uncharacteristically, uh, scared's not the right word, but maybe, maybe just like a like on edge. edge, on edge. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I will also keep out, keep an eye out for any sort of like weapon, like John Q. Blacksmith like weapon shop. Absolutely. Um, what you notice while you're on edge as you're walking through Camelot, you more than anyone else are, are cognizant of all of the soldiers and the guard. Um, and they don't look unfriendly. They look serious and stern, like they take their jobs very seriously. But you are cognizant of these, these people. I mean, these are, these are people that you might... You, you don't necessarily recognize them, right? But you, you recognize that there's a chance that you may have served next to them or that you might know one of their brothers or their cousin, right? Uh, all of the guards here are definitely military adjacent, if not directly involved with the armies of Camelot. And that is definitely something that's on your mind. Um, you do find John Q. Blacksmith um, and make note of where it is. Uh, but you notice that it's getting late. The, the sun... Yeah, I don't want to stop there. I just want to be like, okay, Absolutely. that's where it is. Yeah. You might even find one where, you know, they're, they're already closed for the day. But you make mental note of where it is. And, and you're passing all manner of shops, right? Some that look mystical and magical in nature. Some that sell food and treats. Some that sell weapons and armor, repair things. Um, and you all make mental notes of where these things are as you're walking through the city. And it isn't long at all before you are in front of the Queen's Respite. What you notice as you're walking through this city is that there are four main gates to the city. You entered into the south, there's one in the north, the west, and the east. Very obviously so. Uh, the city was built uh, to be easily accessible from all four directions. You notice that in the middle of Camelot, almost directly in the middle, as if this city was built around it, is a still erect and sort of functioning menhir stone. It is far more powerful than the one that you left behind in Briarbrook. Obviously so. Uh, it's apparent the moment that you lay eyes on it. You're not entirely sure how, as you know that the knowledge to keep these things going is lost to time. Uh, you can only assume that the small army of court wizards that live here are responsible for keeping this place safe from the weirdness. As you pass the, the center of town and the Menhir Stone, you, you notice that the four quadrants of the city have varying degrees of wealth and how up-to-date and how nice they are. And it's very clear that the Queen's Respite, being more in the northeast corner of this uh, large city, is in a much nicer, nobler, richer part of the city. You stand outside of the Queen's Respite, and it's, it's a beautiful building. Uh, it's almost three floors. Uh, different floors are used for different things. They're, the first floor is, is, is a very well-equipped tavern uh, where you can get wonderful meals, hot food, uh, all sorts of different kinds of alcohol, uh, refreshments. And uh, if you choose to stay there, you'd be able to get a room on the second or third floor, uh, hopefully quite easily. From outside, it is obvious that the evening is beginning. There are all sorts of people uh, already inside, uh, enjoying a meal, and uh, the din of the crowd begins to, to, to kind of warm up as you as you stand outside the Queen's Respite. 
This it's, place looks very fancy. It's perfect accommodations for men of our stature, wouldn't you agree? I don't blow all of our fucking coin on drink. This was what I was going to say. We need to save coin to save Briar... Brook. Briar Brook. <laughs> well, we can't properly save our... The, the wonderful souls who took us all in without <clears throat> being in the proper spirits. And it is the drink that raises my spirits to the point of being proper. You understand? How many obols do we have? Forty. And if we stay here for a week, it could be half? I, how much for a room here? Let us find out. I happen to be an expert negotiator. I will follow your lead. Oh. Just do your thing. All right, Every, when you follow behind me, do not speak, and look mildly disgusted. Oh, do you want me to sort of you know, look tough? Yes, I know you, you have know, broken keep, ribs. Keep my, oh, keep my hand on me sword and... And you look mysterious, you're from the continent. You're an outsider, you, perhaps you are a, a great magician. Perhaps you've brought the Red Death. As long as you don't get us all arrested and hanged, we want to put a little bit of fear into them. Uh, I'll pull out a piece of green linen that I have and sort of twist it and then roll it around and pull my hair sort of down in front of my face. And... Good. Follow my lead. As you walk into uh, this very nice inn, uh, you, you push through the doors and you see finely crafted tables and, and some very nice uh, chairs and stools of, of different kinds. And all the way across the room, directly opposite from the door that you've walked in, is a bar. And behind it is a barmaid. And she appears to be uh, the one serving drinks. And uh, you can see some people coming out of the back with food. Uh, but she also appears to be the person who you would speak to to secure a room. I will walk over to her, looking kind of Excuse me, I told that this is the Queen's respite. Oh, uh, that's correct, my lord. Welcome. What can I do you for? Is the impl implication that the accommodations here are fit for a queen? Well, that's what they say. That's why they named the place the Queen's respite. Fit enough for the Queen of Avalon. Well, I am Lord Jasper Dunnington, and, uh... I suppose this will have to do, it's not up to my standards, but my leg, as you can see, is very injured, and I cannot walk another step. We will be needing rooms, despite the unfortunate state that this place seems to be in. Uh, at the mention of this, she looks a little confused. She's She has this look on her face, uh, like this is very clearly one of the nicest places in all of Camelot, and, and is confused by your disgust. And she she looks at you and says, all right, well, uh, I think we have uh, plenty of space. Uh, uh, we're looking at four obols a night. Four obols a night? How, how long would you like to stay? Surely you can't be serious. Four obols. Yes, my lord, I, I'm, I'm quite serious. And people pay that rate? Yes, absolutely. Well, I, the people that I know and my friends would be very upset to hear that you lot here are committing highway robbery, but I will not spread the ill word to those rich and powerful friends if perhaps for a uh, one week, seven nights, if you cut us a deal, two, two obols a night sounds appropriate for the level of accommodation we're getting here. Um, I would like you, uh, using your creativity way and your communication domain... I max that shit out when I... <laughs> let me know if you are, uh, disciplined in persuasion. Shit! No, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I just you, have max communication, though. You have no other disciplines in communication? No, I have no disciplines. Nope. Okay, just wanted to check. Um, so it, what you can do for me again is you will roll, uh, as a reminder of how making a resolution roll works, you roll a 1d10, you'll add your way, and you will add your domain or your discipline if that is higher. 
<gasps> well, okay, hold on. Four plus five creativity, nine. Uh, oh, plus, oh wait, 10 plus four. So that'd be 14. 14. I think that's the threshold for that is one of the dif that one is a difficulty that is a, threshold. That is a difficulty Where threshold. is it? I have it I have right here. That is the threshold for complicated. Uh, the this might be is complicated. 14 we could, is the threshold. We could bump it by two? We could get up to difficult with three. Three? We're gonna we did, yeah, we didn't announce it before. Let's use three. We're very is that poor. how we're doing it? Oh. You at, no, no, it's okay. You you can still use three. I haven't told you what the DC is. You, yeah, asked, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We Thank you asked me what the difficulty threshold was of a 14. I want a feather bed, goddammit. Yeah. I, have, I have not told you what the actual difficulty threshold is for this check. 17, and so my offer is two obols a night for seven nights. She looks around the room, and she looks at you, and she says, Listen, I just work here. I don't own the place, but you three look like you're pretty beat up and look like you could use a nice place to stay. Quite frankly, I don't want the trouble. I don't want anyone calling the guard. I don't want people spreading rumors. Two obols a night for seven days is 14 obols, but I want it up front. Understood? Absolutely. Don't worry. We'll spend all what you would have charged anyway on drink and food. So. Uh, we'll have, uh, we'll have three flagons of Albion gold sent up to the room as well. Uh, on low of a floor as possible. This, uh, my leg doesn't work as well as it used to. And I will reach in and I will pull out, um, 14. I'll round up to 15. And I'll okay. give the extra one. You keep that one for yourself. She says, yeah, uh... Maybe. Good thing you know you're not drinking or eating for free, and I appreciate the tip. You can definitely keep those coming. And she uh, she hands you a key, and she kind of like uh, motions her head uh, over to the staircase, as if to say, uh, "Go on, get out of here before I change my mind." And anybody sees this transaction. I have a uh, pressed flower that I keep among my various uh, herbs and and uh, in my pouch. And I'll also tip with it, just putting it out. It's very beautiful, or sort of like orange, uh, almost uh, uh, yellowish color. And uh, I'm just giving it as a sort of like extra thank you. Thank as, you. As the three of you, one of you, of the three of you, grabs your key and you begin to walk away, you lay this pressed flower thank down you. on the counter. And she almost like is taken aback for a moment. And she has a a slight, soft, warm smile on her face as, as she seems to appreciate the, the gesture. I've forgotten my disguise entirely. I don't even look mysterious. Balto <laughs> doesn't know how to do that. <laughs> and you, you see that she takes it and she sticks it in her apron. And, uh, but she doesn't, she doesn't make eye contact with you. She's, she seems to be hoping that you'll just disappear to your room as quickly as possible. I'll follow my friends. I'll I'll head towards whatever you know whatever room we have. Yeah, and, and uh, the, the room's up the stairs. It is. Uh, she, she she does seem to take into account though Jasper's request for his uh, old leg, and uh, you are just on the second floor, just up the stairs, the first room on the right. All right, my lord. I'll be fine, <coughs> Cell Sword. <laughs> After you, I'll. Very slowly make my way up. Yeah, the kind stairs of shuffling, are shuffling. It's creak, you know, I'm they're, creaking with each one. They're not steep. Taking it slow. It's not too many. Leaning stairs. heavy, you know, and on my cane with each uh, with each step. Um I make it up on my own. You you do. All three of you get up there, you you open the room and you are unbelievably blown away by how nice this is. Uh, especially after spending years in Briarbrook and sleeping in perhaps the back of a chapel <gasps> or on a hard wooden bed with a hay mattress at best. Uh, these are nice beds. Uh, they have nice pillows. They have clean sheets. The room smells nice. It is uh, unbelievable. And it is not long before you hear a knock on the door. Uh, and uh, when you open the door, there are your three um, flagons of ale um, rest sitting outside. Uh, whoever delivered them is already gone. They bought uh, uh, gold? Uh, Albion gold, yes. Albion. Albion Hello. gold. It's a drink, I think. Are we going to fucking drink it in here? 
They, yes. they, they lift, lifted to right on doorstep. You think uh, we're going to drink with a rabble downstairs? <clears throat> Fortunately, door open inwards, otherwise I wouldn't be able to open door. It doesn't feel right not drinking with the rabble downstairs. Well, we can enjoy these flagons, and here yeah, they brought us cups. You don't drink it out of the flagon. Balto, <laughs> I'll reach over and I'll pour, I'll pour everyone a, uh, a cup of wine. But it's so tiny. You take your time and you savor it. This isn't the sour red that we used to drink back in Briarbrook. This may be the last time we ever get to enjoy wine. We at least may. Uh, we may as well enjoy ourselves on the finest that Camelot can offer. This is very nice. I'll, uh, without hesitation, I'm taking the bed. I'm walking over to the bed. <laughs> yeah. I am sitting down. Uh, I'm on like a Shea Lounge. <laughs> <laughs> there are two beds. Oh, hell yeah. There are two beds. Uh, mm. Mm. I'll take mm. the one on the right. You know, Dunnington, I'll hand it to you. This ain't half bad. You said we would spend more on food and drink on top of 14 and 1 and 3 obols. Yes, we have 25 obols left. I'm... I'm not sure how much they charge, but I frankly, I'm not going to waste my time haggling. Did you see how she spoke with such saccharine sweetness about as if giving us this was charity? She did it out of pity, not out of trying to respect the greatness of House Dunnington. As you drank this Albion Gold, uh, it is of such a high quality that you are not used to. I mean, you've been drinking, oh, exactly oh, like you mentioned, oh. you've been drinking the Sour Red from Briarbrook for forever. I mean, it's it's what you've been doing night after night for years as you play cards and reminisce and talk about the days that go by. And so this is a welcome change of pace for those of you that are uh, alcohol enjoyers. It is it is another level of opulence that you haven't experienced in a, in a very long time. And while you're having these conversations, it isn't long at all before you hear the tuning of a lute, uh, of which you presume to be uh, Alexander the Bard uh, warming up to prepare uh, for his entertainment for the evening uh, downstairs with the quote-unquote rabble, uh, as, as Lord Jasper so uh, <laughs> eloquently <laughs> called them. All right, I've done enough drinking alone with two lonely old men. I'm going downstairs. Let's bring the drink. I will join you. <sighs> I can carry you. Don't you fucking dare. I'll see you down there. I will meet you down there. I'm going to finish my cup and collect my thoughts as I strategize, as that is my profession. Uh, I will be right down. All right. I'll take my uh, flagon. Yeah. Yeah. You know the, the pictures of wine. That's a flagon. Oh, that's Cersei's yeah. always. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's <laughs> it's a flagon that you then pour into a cup. So you you have a large amount of alcohol uh, to start yeah, with. A shit. Ton of uh, um, I will bring my flagon and my cup. Yeah. So that I don't offend any of the Camelot <laughs> folk. Fair. Uh, and I'll walk down. I'll take my, my, my roadies and I'll walk down to the main area and I'll try to get a table that's, you know, somewhat near the bard, but not like front row, you know. Yeah, you find a table that's actually that. pretty no. centrally located. <laughs> it's 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 far enough from the bard where you can still have a nice conversation. You don't feel like you're right up against the speakers at a concert. Uh, <laughs> but at the same time, you know, he can see you and he recognizes you and uh, you there's enough seats. It's an empty table. There's enough seats for the rest of your companions as you wait for them. Uh... Balto, uh, Jasper, what are you doing in the meantime before you oh, head down? Oh, uh, you are, uh, okay, do you need me to look at your leg again? I was going to suggest that. I, I just didn't want to hear Kristoff talking shit. And uh, if I... <laughs> <laughs> I suspected this was the case. Uh, if I needed to freshen up and use the restroom first, where would I do that? Is there a space here? Probably or? a communal 
a, like a, a tub, very nice tub with a brush or a soap. I don't know. Yeah, how there is that. a communal bathroom on each floor. Okay. Uh, that you can use, and again, if you, it's not hard to find, and if you choose to do that, you, you would find it of, of unbelievable quality, uh, unlike anything you've probably ever seen. Before. Give me one minute. I will go and freshen up, do my best to clean my hands, yeah. knowing that that will help with the healing process. I'll rub some uh, uh, water into my face and sort of really like de-dust the day of travel off of myself before returning and seeing Jasper's finishing up his drink, I will very quickly just uh, check his wound and make sure that uh, it doesn't need any additional dressing or that it hasn't turned in any uh, way given that it's been in a lot of movement. He's gentle, he's gentle. You, ah. you inspect it and you know that you've done all that you can do today, but you are ever careful and studious and and uh, exact about your work when it comes to medicine, and you check him, and it doesn't appear to be any worse than it was. It, it's certainly not uh, dirty. You clean the wound very well. Um, you'll just have to keep, you know that you're just gonna have to keep monitoring over the next few days. I presume you would have like packed it as deeply as you could have with whatever kind of. Yeah. I'm not removing yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did a whole job, yep. and I'm you just making sure that. You check around the packing, yeah. No scratching, no picking. And it's just like shit. Yes, I know. That's what the wine is for. I'm sure I won't even notice it within the hour. Let us go downstairs and enjoy, uh, the, what was it, the um, maiden and the hair? Close enough. He, do you mind carrying mine? Oh, no, 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 no that's, that's fine, that's fine. And I will very slowly, I'll let, I'll let Balto go down first and I will basically very much take my time. Jasper and Balto are uh, last to leave the room. Uh, you lock up as you do. Uh, not that you have many possessions to leave behind or anything like that, but you just, you know, you're used to it. As you uh, proceed down the stairs uh, to join Kristoff uh, at the table that he's uh, found, uh, something catches your eye on the wall. Um, and you have you notice that you've seen, it's a poster. And you've seen this poster before. Uh, you, you happen to see them uh, pinned to various points in the city as you were walking uh, through. But this is the first time that you are close enough for it to really, truly catch your eye. Um, and Balto and Jasper wouldn't be able to see this because you're the ones walking right by the, the poster. Uh, it is a piece of parchment uh, pinned to the wall, nailed in, and it, it has these beautiful uh, ornate uh, border uh, as it, as it kind of goes around the, the parchment. And uh, you see in a flowery writing, uh, and uh, there's a picture of what looks like a, a scary uh, beast, an overly cartoonish uh, uh, beast that might be out in the woods. And it says, uh, attention, uh, looking for brave hunters. Uh, report to the order of weird hunters. Good pay, lodging, meals, uh, accepting any and all applicants. Signed, Oliver Ezra, weird hunter captain. Mm. Um, you make note of this, you notice that, and again, you, 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 recalling in your memory that you passed several of these posters as you were walking through the, uh, the, the city, and, uh, you join Kristoff at the table. I'll take a look at it as I, the one thing that I have in my hand is my actual, uh, cup, and I'll roll my eyes. Uh, at the poster, and I will certainly will not be doing that. As I will, um, also, I'll join uh, on a stool or whatever, whatever looks the most comfortable. Would I have had time to? Is what I, what we're drinking wine? Yeah. Would I would I have had time before I found the table to get another drink from the the bar? The bar. Absolutely. Uh, if you would prefer ale or a beer of some kind, yeah. they, they have multiple choices, things you've never heard of. They might even say, offer you to try some different things so you can even pick which one you want. They'll and get you're, you a you're, like, you're spoiled for choice. This is something that's unusual to you. Yeah, I would walk up and I would, uh, we don't have to RP this. We don't have to, but, uh, I, would, I would get some kind of just sort of rustic, Ale, nothing too crazy. Yeah, fancy. farmhouse. Uh, and the uh, the the barmaid from earlier, uh, she oh, right. <clears throat> she tells you hello, love. Uh, 
<laughs> we don't have to repeat this. Uh, <laughs> What's your me? name? Tell me your backstory. Her What's, name is What's actually, your name? I have her name. Her name is actually Bridget. Oh! oh that's a beautiful name. My mother's name was Bridget. <laughs> She's the barmaid and innkeeper. <laughs> and uh, she tells you that for a noble, uh, you can actually get three of those ales. And that she will just put, she'll, she, she'll put on the tab. You, you tell her you don't have any money on you because Jasper's your money keeper. Oh, uh, there's, a, there's a charge for... For the ale? For yeah. Yes, of course. I told you, you won't be drinking and eating Even though we're staying here in a in the in the tavern. That's absolutely right. Oh, all right, this really is a nice place. All right, throw it on the tab. And she does. Uh, and but basically, you know that when you're finished your ale, you can come up for two more. Uh, you you know, one opal will buy you three of these, and you'll be you'll be drinking into the evening easily. Uh, well, thank you, love. Uh, I'll take all three. I should be able to handle this. Oh, she and then she she wide-eyed nods and. Yes, right away, and she pours them for you, and uh, you're able to take them back to your your table. Ah. <sighs> Welcome back, lads. Yeah. I decided to um, add a little variety to the evening's menu. Well, we have pitchers of wine. You buy more ale? Yeah, I just was feeling something a little more like home. You know what I mean? And even the simple ale <laughs> is much better than what you're used to. I mean, it's crisp. <laughs> <laughs> a little carbonated, nice and cool. More for me. Been in the cellar. Oh, I'm not, oh don't touch mine. I'm still going to drink that. But I just figured I could really go for an ale right Are now. Are you going to drink all three ales in addition to your one? No, I got one for each of you, of course. How much does this cost? What? I am. Um, don't worry about it, Balto. Well, what if we find men who can fix men here, and then they say it's twenty obols, and then we don't have the obols, and then all of a sudden we have to go and work and find out how they were here for years, and the town is destroyed. I've been in Briarbrook too long. I was sort of taken aback when we had to pay for more ale. I mean, usually it's just sort of like a give and take kind of thing, where we just drink and then we go to bed. But it was one for all free. Well, that's Ooh. why the good people of Briar Brook are... The good people of Briar Brook and these are... Hmm. The chaff. You are having this conversation, and by now, uh, Alexander the Bard has started singing. And uh, it's very clear that uh, he Oh, is, he's here. He is a... He, he performs here a lot. Uh, the, the people cheer for him. They're happy that he's here. Uh, people are not quite getting rowdy yet. They're excited, uh, but these are, you know, refined folk. They're 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 paying more money than they might in some other portion of the city. So rowdier than normal. So they're 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 they're, they're drinking uh, and they're having a good time, but they're still showing respect and everybody's uh, uh, having a great conversation. I would like all three of you to roll perception. Uh, oh uh, shit! Skill check for me. Uh, it's the oh. awareness, the awareness way. I'm gonna save uh, perception the good one. You're domain. hurting. You're drunk. So you will roll a one d10 and add your uh, discipline uh, or domain. If you have um, no, no, no domain. Uh, we're sorry, no, no discipline. We're just gonna use straight perception. So, oh, okay. So one d10 plus your way plus your domain. Can I crit on this? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You can. Well, let's confirm that. So you let's got confirm the crit. Oh. All right. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh! oh. Close, All right. close, Chris close. Chris, you got an eleven total. Eleven. Yep. Okay. Twelve, love. Twelve. <laughs> that's it. Oh, that's my voice. With a ten. <laughs> ten plus two. Twelve. Ten plus, plus two I'm... plus. Uh, it should be more than that. Aware, it should be awareness plus perception. Oh, he doesn't. No, she's only aware. He's, he's two uh, awareness. I, 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 I have two awareness. <laughs> yeah. right. I'm, I'm, right. I'm looking around the best I could possibly. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> you guys be. stop making fun of me. <laughs> uh, Jasper, what'd you get, buddy? Good not to have good eye plan on my <laughs> name is Bolto uh, I got a six. Oh my! God. I did not. I I got a one, but I uh, did not confirm the crit fail. <laughs> oh Did, shit! Oh, you tried. Oh, to I, tried I wonder to why you rolled too. Yeah. Yeah. Ask me one of those details. Yeah. Oh, uh, this is my nice one. So oh, take this yeah. one. Oh, yeah. There's there's fourteen hundred oh, right here. I just need to. Yeah. There's fourteen hundred. Um, you. <laughs> the, uh, the the bar is playing. People are talking. Uh, 
as as the as the drinks are flowing, people are getting louder, and it is really only Kristoff and Balto that are able to catch bits of conversation that are happening around you. I'm in my cups immediately. Yeah, you, I do not give a shit. That's right. Yeah, this you, song you, is very suggestive. You, this is the finest wine that you've had in a very long time, and you almost can't get it down fast enough. And um, you hear whispers of, oh, it's, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, it's court day, court day. Oh, I hope that I can uh, speak with the queen. Oh, no one ever, no one ever speaks with the queen. You'll be speaking with their advisor. Oh, but tomorrow could be the day. Tomorrow could be the day. And you hear, oh, it wasn't uh, another conversation. Oh, there's a. Uh, did you hear the the, the 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 weird hunters? They came back today. Another big kill. They were paid handsomely, handsomely. Oh, I, I certainly hope they're thinning out the the hole. It's uh, it's been getting worse. It's been the mist has been kicking up. Uh, and you hear these conversations go back and forth, and um, it, it's it's. A matter of how much you'd want to listen, uh, but you're you're hearing tidbits about the 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 order of the weird hunters, and your people are excited about uh, open court day, and uh, hoping to uh, early tomorrow morning uh, be uh, able to get some face with the royalty and and air their grievances and and get help uh, with with everything that's going on. I would definitely, even though I'm I'm hurt and I'm relaxing. Um, I assume that my liege lord is, uh, you know, three sheets to the wind at this point. Yeah. So I'm going to basically try to stay on, on, you know, on alert and, on, you know, we're, we're still on a mission after all. So Absolutely. I'm going to try to listen. Yeah. So if you'd like to make, uh, if you'd like to make, if that catches your ear and you'd like to listen more intensely, make another perception check <laughs> for me. Eight plus a ware. <laughs> yeah, it is uh, 1d10 <laughs> plus your way plus your domain. 13. Awareness plus, okay. I have plus four of all right. Um, depending What's on which all? conversation you'd oh, prefer no. to uh, to pursue, oh, uh, fuck. you actually feel like uh, with that perception that you, it, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be um, out of place for you to uh, talk to them. Um, Only if you'd like to. To go up and talk to them? Yeah, you you know, they, they seem friendly. They seem open to the, like, you know, like you're at a bar and you're and you're drinking and you're leaning over when you hear somebody's conversation and you you, you say, oh, by the way, and you but they, they, you feel like, you, you get the feeling that depending on which conversation you'd like to proceed with, uh, that you can do that. You can you be able to insert your, yourself into their conversation without them getting upset. Did they talk about the really weird hunters and they kill it? Yeah, I don't know if you've heard too, but... Hey, Jasper, you fucking paying attention? They speak of the, uh, 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 the we, uh, some weird hunters came back at the, oh, the day. Oh, it was on the poster, yes. They, they, no, the, the mist is kicking up. But it's and they're offering coin. Big kill. Oh, and I overheard somebody on the other, at the other table. Oh. They're meeting with, with the uh, queen tomorrow. That's what the lovely Alexander had already said. It's court today, tomorrow. Are you sure you heard they were meeting the queen? The advisor was going to hear out. We, he suggested that we could get the advisor's ear and perhaps inquire about the Meneer. Well, I'm trying to say this might be a fucking inn. Besides going through a fucking bar. Maybe there's some fancy upper crust folk here. It's worth a shot. When is it? What? When is it? When is what? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? The court day is tomorrow. It's tomorrow? tomorrow? It's tomorrow morning. It's tomorrow. We have one night uh, rest. No, what's that? In the morning. Yes, in the morning. <sighs> it's from, you know. By the old mother. <laughs> um. <laughs> why? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what, what are the, um, what are the descriptions of both groups of people? Yeah, so um, the, 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 the table that you overheard discussing the weird hunters and their kill and uh, what had happened, they are uh, a group of uh, one woman and two, two men. Um, and they seem to be a little bit more working class. They're not, uh, they don't look dirty or, or like threadbare, but they, they seem to be uh, working class and that they're, they, they're interested in, in these, these weird hunters that, uh, you know, uh, seem to go out and hunt daily, and and they're 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 much more have their finger on the pulse of, of what's going on with these these um, 
weird hunters. Whereas the people who are talking about potentially going to court, they look like they're a little bit more high class, like they might have a little bit more money. And uh, clearly they have some sort of something that they want to talk to the, uh, the queen about. I think you go speak with them. Uh, Jasper seems to be enjoying the music. <laughs> he has such a sweet voice, uh, doesn't he? I'll get up, and yes. if, there's a, if there's an extra chair at the Weird Hunters... Uh, yeah, yeah, you, uh, there is. And it would be very easy for you to uh, say hi and insert yourself. Oh, yeah. How are you lovely folk doing this evening? You mind if I sit? Oh, welcome. Please, pull up a chair. Cheers. I pulled and, uh, he lifts chair. up a He lifts up a glass of a... a, 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 a I brought me a own. Monk. I hope you don't mind. Cheers. Of course, cheers, of cheers. Uh, do any of you know how to play Merlin's Beard? And I pull out a deck of cards uh, that I brought with me. Uh, uh, the one man the one man looks at you and says, oh, no, no Merlin's Beard for me. I swore off it many ages ago, but uh, the others, they, they might be up for hand or two. Uh, well, uh, I'm gonna sort of focus on the on the on the woman that's that's on their group. Uh, what's your name, love? Roll Dang, for it. Derek. No, no, I'm good. <laughs> she looks at you and she says, uh, "Oh, my my name is Mirabelle. What's yours?" Mirabelle. It's a beautiful name. My mother's name is Mirabelle. <laughs> <laughs> she smiles a little at you. It's uh, Christoph. <laughs> it's a pleasure Woo! to meet you, Christoph. Uh, How's your evening? Oh, it's going lovely. You and your friends, you look like a tough lot. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough on Avalon. It's tough everywhere. Even here in the kingdom, it's tough. Yeah, Things I... are tough. You have to be tough, right? She raises her glass. That's exactly right. Uh, yeah, you might suspect. I guess, would, I, would it be unreasonable for me to have my sword at my side? No, not at all. Uh, I mean... It, it, it's not unreasonable, but you would notice that most of the people in here are not armed. Uh, but they don't seem concerned that you would be armed. Okay, so I would have, I think, left my shield in the room. But sure. my sword's definitely on my side. Yep. And I'll sort of uh, tap it. And I'll say, uh, liege lord pays a high, high price to keep him safe. But uh, did I overhear that you uh, were uh, speaking about the uh, weird hunters? Oh, yes. No, I... Brave, brave people they are. I don't know how they do what they do day in and day out. They, they help keep Camelot safe. They willingly, for coin of course, venture out into the weirdness and slay horrific monsters to keep us safe. Mighty heroic. I don't know if you've noticed, they have posters all over town. They're always recruiting. Oh no, I noticed. I noticed. Oh, uh, you know, I must admit I've come uh, to grips with a few uh, weird beasties myself. The 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 ranks aren't great. That's why they're so desperate for recruitment. But uh, the pay is good. There's food. There's lodging for those of them that, for those of you that might not have it. Uh, clearly, you're here, so <laughs> you you must have some coin yourself. But uh, really, what they do is 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 by the all mother so noble. Do you any of you fight? Uh, you look around the table and. Uh, 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 Maribel shakes her head, and, and the two other gentlemen. Uh, uh, look at you, and one of them says, uh, Oh, I used to. Not so much anymore. I'm doing all right for myself, as you can see. We're here with you tonight. <laughs> uh, we just respect them. It's uh, good good lads. Uh, you fought in, uh, for the army. Oh, not me. Had a brother, though. Oh. Yeah, well. Good lad, your brother. <sighs> it's a shame, but you're right. He was a good, he was a good lad. Uh, well, I mean, you, if you happen to, you know, I'm, given that I'm quite skilled and uh, I'm a little brave myself, do you happen to know uh, anything beyond what's on the posters in terms of who I might be able to speak to about these uh, weird hunters? Well, uh, besides uh, talking to the other townsfolk and, and people who may have interacted with them, I tell you to go talk to all of them himself. He's friendly. He's, he'd be eager to see you, especially if you're interested in, in, in monster slaying. All right. Well, uh, I'll look at the uh, the fine lady and I'll say, uh, I'll let him know that uh, you sent me, and I'll flash her a wink. She uh, she giggles a little and then blushes and says, <laughs> of, "Of course, of course, uh, uh, Captain Ezra. He's your man." All right, well, you know, uh, if uh, <clears throat> y'all are heading out soon, best not to start a game of Merlin's Beard. I'll let you get back to it. Well, if you change your mind, we'll be here. All right. 
Have a good evening. Good night. And I'll head back to the table. You do that. All well? Every what what did you learn? How how did the uh, you seem to be laughing and smiling, I think it went oh, well. Yeah. It, was, it was quite nice. Fine lady over there, his name is Mirabelle. Oh. Oh, okay. How does that help us in any way? Oh, it doesn't. <laughs> it, it, it was, they knew, they know of the, the, the guard captain that's on the posters. They said he's friendly. If we f- think that maybe, you know, trying to find these folks that know the weird, they might have the key or the secret to, you know, bolster them in ear stones, but uh, I have a feeling that the weird hunters are you know, working class folk that uh, risk their lives for coin, so I'm not sure how sorceress or arcane their knowledge is going to be. If I were a weird hunter and I made coin for killing weird monsters, I am not sure I would want the men here to be at bay. It's going to at least be three days before we are in any shame to be trudging off through the woods seeking monsters. I am we may just find them. Merely okay. I could use a few nights of rest myself. I think what we do is have experienced the open court day, try to get in touch with the advisor and Balthazar, what the fuck, Archibald. And always name something like Archibald or Balthazar or Merlin. Yeah, Fucking uh, wizards. Is it through? <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I love these characters. Yeah. You guys are just so great. <laughs> Fucking oh, wizards. Why don't you go make some friends with the fancy folk at the table next door? They're very fancy and they are They're speaking all fucking there. Of I the made queen. the friends that I had to to get us here and get me to my Albion gold. I cannot speak with them. They are fancy folk. They don't care for. The, no, you, well, you know, Bolto, I would and... like to see that. Why don't you go on and try? Oh dear, God's by the oh if father. I, if I go up there, it's a little bit. Oh, hello, my lord. Need a refill on your flagon. And they would you know, smell the stink of cow shit right away. Turn the noses up at me. Why not the same for me? <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> it's in this. It's in this moment. Uh, you. You're, you're, you're having. You're debating back and forth about who should go talk to this other table. Uh, the bard is is getting louder. His his play is 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 reaching a, a fever pitch as the night is passing on and people are getting more uh, drunk and they're having a good time and even these fancy folk seem to be loosening up a bit. Uh, as a large man uh, stumbles up to your table. And he he stops for a minute, and he kind of he kind of wobbles a, a, a moment. And hello there. In that moment, the way that he's moving, you can see that he's almost as drunk as Jasper. And he has a he has kind of a scowl on his face, and he looks at Jasper and he points his fingers. He says, "Oh, you, you're fucking Dunnington, ain't ya?" Do I know you, sir? Ah, uh, you don't know me, but I think I fucking know you. I'm glad my reputation precedes me. Uh, How do you do? He's he's a little louder than might be comfortable uh, in this place, and some of the patrons are noticing this. This is happening. Who the fuck is this? And he and he, he 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 looks at your question. He looks at you and goes. I thought you were fucking dead. Drunk yourself to death after you poisoned that kid. Well, one of the things you just said is fucking true. I did not touch the boy. Someone may have poisoned him. I think it was the Frosbys. And as he says, uh, accuses you of poisoning this this young lad. I will stand up. Okay, uh, but I'm gonna need you to make a test roll. <gasps> Uh, and what this is going to do is, uh, this is something that is very painful for you to remember. You are a prideful person. You know that these rumors have spread 
uh, around, um, you know, the different towns and places that you've been to. And you haven't quite been ever able to really shape these rumors. And it's something that no matter how hard you try, it still bothers you. Uh, and so what you're going to do is that you are going to roll a 1d10. And uh, it, the, the result of the 1d10 must exceed the relevant way. And the way is the one that you uh, are... Five. Yes. Creativity? Yes, whichever one is the one uh, that is your highest and based on your fault. Um, and this rumor, you're going to roll a 1d10 and see if you can overcome uh, this accusation and, and uh, rise above this, this insult. Rumor has it. Rumor has it. It's equal to five. <laughs> oh. It must exceed the rating. Ah! So I'm going to roll 1d10 real quick. Okay. Uh, for the next three minutes, you will suffer a minus two penalty on all of your resolution rolls, and uh, basically you you succumb to your fault. Uh, the 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 shame that you feel uh, for this rumor following you uh, that eats away at your prideful nature. Uh, it, it's going to be not a long time, but enough that you you take the bait. I stand up, and I grab, snatch my cane, I put my cup down, I immediately stand up, and I will look at him and say, excuse me, do you have any idea who the fuck you are talking to? I am Jasper Dunnington of Castle Blackmont. I have the blood of the Hydra. What house are you from, peasant? I'll jump up immediately after he does. Whoa, 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 big, big lad, we don't want any fucking of trouble. Christoph, I asked him a of fucking question. Of course I fucking know who you are. I said you're fucking Donnington, and I said it out loud, and I said you fucking killed that kid. I did not harm a hair on Benedict's head. I suggest, my good friend, that you take that back, or there will be words. Oh, there's gonna be words? How about there be some fists, or are you not man enough to meet me outside? Donnington, it's fucking late. What house do you belong to? I don't recognize you. I've never heard of you. I'm sorry that you know my reputation. I know nothing of you. This this jab, uh, it, for a moment, he's taken aback, and it seems like you've 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 wounded him. Everything's okay. No, don't no, no worries I here. Need to, I need to crit confirm. <gasps> ah! Okay. Uh, he. The, at this point, the patrons are, are, all, are all stunned. Uh, the bard is trying to play on, but he can tell that there is he's, he's losing the crowd a little bit to, to this outburst. And he says, it doesn't fucking matter what house I'm a part of. You know what we do to people like you around here. If you were a whole man, he looks at your leg, you'd meet me outside. And here I thought you were some... some noble of some house of repute, even a minor lordling. Maybe good chums with the Frosbys who get drunk and fat in my castle. But you aren't even a landed knight, are you? How dare you? I will meet you outside, you pathetic excuse of a, of, 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 of a worm. Ah, uh, okay. All right, all right, well done. Okay. No, 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 no. Look, I suggest you forget this fucking happened, you turn around and you fucking leave. You understand? He stumbles a little. He's, he's very clearly drunk. Uh, he looks at you. He looks at Jasper. He says, I'll fucking be waiting outside. I'll be waiting. You best be looking over your shoulder. People know about you, Dunnington. People know. Good. Good, they know that I'm not dead that I am very much alive, that the Hydra lives, and that my castle will be mine again, and the Frosbys better keep their eyes out. He starts to back up, trips over a chair, he catches himself, people people snicker a little, they laugh as he, and he, he looks around and he is, is angry and a little embarrassed that he tripped and, and that he couldn't match wits with you initially. And as he gets to the door and he pushes the door open with force, you see him spit outside 
and as he looks back over his shoulder and he walks off as the door closes behind him. And at this moment, Alexander the Bard is looking around the tavern and he he begins to, to, to start a new song that has a call and response to try to get the crowd uh, back in and and it, everything is fine, everything is fine. The, 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 uh, the, the barmaid, it was looking very nervous and, and just hoping that it would be taken outside. And uh, things begin to return to normal, uh, even though the, the, the vibe is a little tense now and people are, are hoping to, to just have some fun and, and get back to drinking, and this was very, this outburst was very unusual for this, for this inn. What the fuck are you doing? You can't Dunnington. go outside, you can't, you are hurt. I sit back down and I pick up my cup and I refill it. I'm not going outside, are you fucking kidding me? Are you me? trying to get us all <laughs> fucking killed? Dude? No, that's, his, he's a braggart and he's full of hot air. He, do you see how he tripped? He's afraid of me. Once I'm not out there in the next 10 minutes, he's going to feel awfully embarrassed and ashamed. He won't show himself in this tavern again. He's going to walk, walk home with his tail between his legs. His pride's been insulted. So is mine. All he needs is a couple of fucking friends, and we all end up with daggers between our fucking ribs. I will think that we can take him. He's not even a landed knight. Get him upstairs to bed. I'll go fucking deal with him. Let's go. It's not a time to the sleep. The show is almost over. We're almost out of drink. I, you are not my fucking mother. Give me Press another off. robe. I will get ailed. We'll go upstairs. Dunnington. <laughs> Go to fucking bed. We don't want... Think of Briarbrook. We are not here for this. We are here to help those people. Well, if you kill him, get his name first. I want to know who I'm it is. I'm not going to kill anybody. Fine. Fine. I'll stand up. I'll grab my cane. I'll grab my cane. I'll stand up, and I'll uh, play a ball to take that one. Let's, let's let's we'll bring that one upstairs. At the, pointing at a flagon. I I'll pop it off with the remainder of another flagon and uh, 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 see that Jasper starts to make his way up the stairs to our room, and then quickly run back to the bar, ask Bridget for three of the nice farmhouse ales that uh, Christoph had ordered, and then. Yeah, she tells you for another obel, she'll put it on the tab and... I just... See if they have any peppered boar, mutton chops <laughs> glazed with honey and and cloves. Oh, yes, we haven't eaten. eaten. You are able to order food, and uh, for <coughs> three more obels, it's plenty of food for the evening. Okay. So, again, on your tab? So yeah. I'll track. I don't even ask how much it is, okay. I just... <laughs> she tells you. We're hungry, and it's the end of the night. It's not that late, but it's the end of our night, uh, and I will follow Jasper does. up, uh, knowing that food and beverage is on the way. Awesome. I will leave the establishment. Yeah, so you, uh, hoping to maybe defuse the situation or talk to this, this man whose name you did not catch, uh, you proceed out the door of the front of the inn, uh, just like he left, and uh, it's it's dark outside. There There's some candle lit uh, illuminations, but it's dark. And as you step out, you look left, look right, and uh, you don't see anybody. Hmm. Anyone there? You wait a moment. No answer. I've come to speak for Dunnington. A few more moments pass. There's no answer. You are under the impression that this man did not stick around to find out uh, what might have happened had uh, Jasper or any number of the three of you walked out of those tavern doors, uh, from what you can tell. He doesn't seem to be around. Uh, I'll walk back in and sit back at the table alone. I'll continue to work on my ale. Um, and with them upstairs, uh, <coughs> going to bed, um, I, there's no other way to say this. I look for a lusty Avalonian maid. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, yeah, you, you are, 
Uh, things are winding down. Uh, when you told Jasper to go to bed and Balto tried to tell Jasper that the Bard wouldn't be playing for much longer, he was right. Uh, things are, it's late in the evening. You've been here for many hours as you've discussed and talked to people and drank and had a good time and almost caused an altercation. Um, and uh, a lot of people have been returning to their rooms uh, and um, it's not nearly as crowded as it was as things are winding down. There are a few people left. Um, and <clears throat> you spy one individual who might fit that description. Uh, I will uh, <laughs> sort of all, all down my one drink. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll take the flagon and I'll take uh, two of the cups that was left um, from the uh, from the earlier in the evening. And I will uh, approach her table and we don't have to RP this, but I, I intend to socialize with her. Yeah, uh, she sees you coming from a mile away, and immediately the thing that you notice, uh, actually, hold on, let's do, let's take a look, let's take a look here. I don't, uh, I don't, I, I don't have a good angle on the street, I don't know <laughs> I, if he's you, okay. Here's what I want you to do, I would like you to make an awareness. I can't check. see. He's hold fine, on. he's fine. I know, I, should nothing. I go down? I, I, should, I could, I could hold help. On, hold he on. could be bleeding. Uh, I'd like you to make an awareness check. Uh, perception, and if you have the discipline of human behavior, you may use that. All right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what you use, human behavior. <laughs> so, was it, sorry, what, what, what stat? Uh, it's awareness and perception uh, is the... That's an eight. Is the domain, it's an eight. Let me, I'm gonna up it by two. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> Okay. Don't not, no! <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> no! Who does it? Okay. So as you're approaching this, uh, this woman, uh, it is, it is very clear that the look on her face is one that turns to recognition as she is one that, uh, mm -hmm. she very clearly remembers that you were involved in the altercation with that gentleman earlier and were involved with one Jasper Dunnington. And she almost immediately looks like she doesn't want to talk to you. Um, how much does she look like? She doesn't want to talk to me. <laughs> it's, it's pretty clear. I mean, she's, she's, she's not making it for the. She's not running for the door yet. Uh, but you can tell she's she turns cold. Her face turns cold. Um, I'll pull back a chair and I'll say, "Hello, love." Uh, as soon as you sit down, she gets up and she walks away. <sighs> Um, I will, uh, I'll just sit there and I'll pour myself, I'll put the two cups down and I'll pour both cups and I'll <laughs> yep. drink one of them. Yeah. I um, think, I think it has been too much time. <laughs> Jasper, I think I should go down and check on him. Do whatever you want, Bolso, he's fine. Things have gotten uh, much quieter now. It is late in the evening, and the rest of the evening is yours, but uh, there's not much going on left in this inn. Everybody has kind of uh, turned to their rooms, and the bard is done playing, and uh, the bar maiden uh, tells you that she'll be serving for a little bit longer, but, you know, we're, we're, she's approaching last call because she's going to be done work soon. Well, oh, what are you he waiting for, Balto? <laughs> Did you come back down? Yeah, I think that <clears throat> if enough time passes, I would I would be like I I have, I have to go check, and I would I would stomp down the stairs. And uh, seeing you at the table, I mean, imagine immediately, evidently, with no one in other patrons. <laughs> yeah, he is the only one left <laughs> in the in the tavern. Kristoff, what are you you've just been sitting here? Oh uh, yeah, you want to join me? Wait, what happened with man? Oh, he fucking turned tail and ran. Well, I went by, was, by the time I got out there, there was no one, no one stood around to wait. I don't know if he was scared of me or Dunnington. We have food and, and additional ale. Oh, no. Oh, I figured. You uh, okay? I, no, I'm fine. It has been a long day. And it's, uh, I feel on edge. You know what I mean, Bolso? It is to be expected. This time yesterday, I think, we were still with Leo. Poor fucking Leo. I mean, as far as the odds are concerned, there's a pretty good chance we'll end up just like he did. I fear the trek back home. 
if we even get that far. Yeah, but you're right. <clears throat> um, how's Dunnington? I suspect asleep. He had a hundred and fifty percent of the wine. I'd <laughs> <laughs> say just a hundred fifty percent. I am being generous. <laughs> Would you like to play a uh, uh, heads up Merlin's beard before bed? You know. <clears throat> I could go for a round or two. You deal out the cards and you play a few rounds of Merlin's Beard before uh, you are ready to head to bed and you 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 make use of this time for the first time in, in a week or so that you feel safe and you feel like you can rest and enjoy yourself. And for a moment, it's almost like the old days in Briarbrook, only you're just in a much nicer place. <clears throat> the food is better, the alcohol is better, the rooms are better and you take a moment to enjoy it before heading off to bed and getting some rest. You all sleep soundly through the night uh, with food and uh, water and, and being able to rest. You all will heal two points on your health charts. Let's go. Diggity dog. So you'll remove two, uh, two checks. Uh, you know that you have to be up in the morning. It's not unusual for you all to be early risers. If you spend an hour in the morning allowing Balto to continue treating your, your uh, wounds, uh, he'll be able to make some rolls to heal you further, as uh, this is what he would do on a daily basis to make sure that you're all healing, no one is infected, that you don't have any uh, internal bleeding or contusions that are severe, uh, things like that. So uh, it would be up to you, uh, but he is able to check you over and treat you once a day to continue to improve your condition as you as you're healing. I think that we would wake up and do that before discussing the priorities of the weird hunters and the knowledge that there's a court day today. Yeah, you would you would know <clears throat> from the context of the conversations that you overheard and from what Alex the Bard had told you was that uh, today is your chance to, to talk to court. And if you want to speak to uh, a wizard uh, or... Talk to um, the Queen's advisors and perhaps <coughs> find, that, like, this is your only real lead, right? Are, are the wizards here in Camelot. Uh, this is your day, so you're you're going to have to, to make use of it uh, today. The next court day wouldn't be for several weeks, and uh, you're worried uh, that uh, that is too long. If I spend an hour with Jasper to get him negative two wounds. Yeah. Is that hour shared across? I have to spend three hours. No, no, no. I, I just one hour in the morning treating yourselves and each and each of them is all it will take. Okay. It's not going to delay your you being late for the open court day. So it would be something that you would do routinely, where it, it, almost like you are back in Briarbrook, where you would do your rotations and check on your patients. Uh, that you would take an hour to. I'll make wake sure early. I'll get a basin of fresh water. I will come upstairs and with some rags and what herbs I can apply, I will redress uh, your wound. Uh, I will take <sighs> another close look at Kristoff and make sure that you're doing okay. Uh, there's some, you know, one of these wounds I'm sure almost certainly needed stitching day one and you didn't complain enough about it, so now I'm making sure that that's taken care of. Um, and I have a few scrapes and bruises myself uh, that I uh, rub a little salve into just to ease the pain. Um, I'll spend that hour, and as we're discussing, uh, the minor injuries being what they are, or just injuries, do we think we have energy enough for court today? I understand it might not come back for some time. I would have probably gotten up before everyone. And there, as we're getting ready, I will be pouring myself a cup of, uh, <laughs> of Albion gold. I love that. As I'm pouring myself, as I uh, grab my cane, I put it down and um, I'll, I'll drink it and I'll say, well, we don't have any other better plans, do we? What do we hope to accomplish at court? We hope to get access to not Balthazar, what the fuck was Archibald? Archibald uh, Rasp, I think, Rasp? Archibald Rasp, yes. We we ask him about how we can find <coughs> magics to rejuvenate our Menea Stone, or we find a new Menea Stone where we can conduct a pilgrimage. That is by far the least desirable of the options, though. 
I would say at least a third of the town is probably too sickly and, or too old to make the voyage without the journey without dying. That is last option. Caspar, right. uh, the boy I, I treated for many weeks, he is still sick, very sick. It will be much longer yes. before he could make any journey. So we gotta find the wizards, or whoever might be able to help. And that means we need to go. And I've been at court plenty. I should be able to handle this no problem. Perhaps even gain audience with the queen herself. Should we look a certain way? We should all make sure we bathe, yes. How presentable can you look? Oh, I can be all right. I don't think we have time to go to a tailor's. We should, I guess we should have gone last, yesterday. When we arrived. We were tired yesterday. There I don't was... think we could afford it either. Thank you. Yes. I will come here. As a part of the hour that you might use to administer first aid uh, to all three of you, you'd also be getting ready bathing. Uh, I'll shave and yeah. try to get my sort of beard mustache somewhat presentable. Y Maybe wax it a little bit. Yeah, and you would also know that, like, the point of Open Court Day is for anyone to be able to go and share their grievances and their problems and hopes for, for finding a solution. So it's not uncommon for people who are even super low born to, to be there, right? Um, they might not get the same treatment, but, you know, everyone is welcome. Uh, if, if you are going to administer first aid, what I would like you to do is make three uh, healing checks yeah. with the discipline of first aid if you have to. Ooh, <laughs> I don't. So if you could just because tell me. Because I was who mistaken role, last session. <laughs> who each roll is for uh, as you shout them out, let me know what you get. Okay, uh, but I am a good healer. So it will be 1d10 uh, plus the way plus the domain of healing. 5 plus 5 plus 2 is 12 plus my 1d10. Yeah, that sounds right. Who's this for? <sighs> Uh, shit. Uh, I'll make that for Jasper. Okay. It's gonna be a twenty. Perfect. Next. This one will be for Kristoff. Ooh, let's that's gonna be a twenty-one. Go. Damn. Okay. And this is the Natural lucky die. Wow. Well, uh, that's gonna be an eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. One moment. Yeah. Um, so you are, uh, because you don't have the appropriate discipline, uh, but you rolled really well, everyone will heal an additional point. Just a point. Okay. So That's three fun. total. Yeah, yes. three total. Yep. Okay. Two, two from the long rest of food and water, and one from the oh. healing from, from Balto. I am still okay. So he just healed us one. Yes, you each get one healing. Okay. I will, uh, have the other two cups. Oh, for this one. Uh, after Balto, you know, checks me out and I'm looking a bit presentable. Would anyone else care for a bit of the scale of the Hydra that burned you? <laughs> As I grab the flag and ready to pour in the cups. I do not need more wine this morning. We drank plenty last night. It's the break of dawn, Dunnington. The perfect time to begin. Your nerves, it'll help us be presentable in court. I have, uh, water and I will pour it in and I'll Put pack in a little bit of uh, additional powder. Uh, y you can't tell if it's it's medicine or if it's just flavoring, but I I'm sipping at my own personal it's a nice concoction. Mm. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> As, I'll, uh, I'll 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 take the flag in myself. I'm ready to go. Yeah, and you you continue <clears throat> doing your morning rituals. You might stop uh, downstairs for uh, uh, some refreshments and maybe some food, some breakfast, light breakfast before you head out. Uh, but it isn't long at all before you are uh, walking through the thoroughfare again in this bright morning and you see the people getting ready for trading and the things that they do as you make your Amazing. way to the main keep where you know that the open court is is going to happen. And uh, again, making note of, of notable places and things that you might want to see uh, given time here. And it isn't long before you uh, find this main keep and it, it's it's easy to find not only because of its size but because of the crowd that is gathering here and there seem to be lines forming and there are uh guards who are directing people different places in different ways and they make sure that you get in the correct line based on what you're looking for you tell them that you, you you're hoping to speak to a court wizard <laughs> and there's a special line for that and this is a slow and painful process this is bureaucracy at its finest, and maybe something you guys aren't used to because you you don't deal with 
uh, the cities. You don't deal with these guards. You don't deal with politics. You are used to farmers. You are used to people who do things when they want to do them, when they're not on anybody else's time except for the way that the sun moves. And so this is kind of a, a painful process where you're being shuffled from one place to the next and you're waiting in line. And Jasper's complaining about his leg because he's standing for so long in this line. And after many, many, many hours, uh, it is not long, well, and it's very long, after many hours, you finally reach uh, the head of the line, and standing before you is one of the Queen's advisors. He introduces himself as Edward, as he says, All right, who's next? Come forward, come forward. Yes, we wish to gain audience. All right, and you're here to speak with the court wizard? Yes, yes, the court, wi court wizard. My name is Lord Jasper Dunnington. This is Christoph <coughs> Reiner, and this is Balto, son of Carson. All right, and he's he's flipping through some parchment and he's marking off. He writes down uh, the names that you said, and he says, uh, "Quick summary of uh, of your visit, your reason for for having a, a meeting with the, with the wizard." We are seeking knowledge of how to reactivate a Mania stone, or perhaps knowledge of where an untainted Mania stone may lie. He he scoffs a little and says, "All right," and he seems to jot, jot that down. Uh, perfect. Uh, the Wizard Rast will see you shortly. Uh, you can head right down this way, uh, and you will see his door is on the right. I thank you. Now proceed, please, quickly. Next, who's next? And he, he calls up uh, whoever's next in line, and you you start to walk through this castle, and it is, it is magnificent. I mean, this is, this is stone craft that you have not been this close to ever. It is beautiful, it is old, and you find yourself wondering how long Camelot has been here. And it's it is just absolutely wonderful masonry, uh, and and you can feel the opulence. Um, small you, small details like the click of my shoes yeah. on the surface of the stone are surprising and new information to both. Yeah, it's 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 a strange echo that you hear uh, as you walk down this this hallway, and you find a uh, a wooden door uh, that you've been directed to by the advisor. It was the seal of the queen on the letter that stripped me of my lands and titles. I'll just look around. Very... Not filled with disgust. I don't know what the word is. Disdain. I don't believe she got some gift from the gods for a fucking second. Do you really believe the whispers of the small folk? Do you think it's what? Witchcraft? Strange dark powers? She manipulates all of Avalon? That's the stuff of fairy tales of snarks and grumpkins. What makes you so sure? Because it's never complicated. It's the small folk that want it to be some grand plan or strange mystical powers controlling things. Then there's something to to blame, something to shake their fist at for their shit life. They don't want to accept that life sucks. So you think that they've just replaced the queen for hundreds of years and she plays it off like, oh, I'm King Arthur's sister. The same one, and here I am, centuries later. Doesn't have to be witchcraft. Or malevolence, does it? Or what, it could be. What else do you think it is? A good workout regiment. A healthy diet of dates. I don't fucking know, I don't care. All I care about is getting safety for Briarbrook. And she's only as useful in that aim. You hear a muffled clicking, uh, that same click-clack of shoes on stone and uh, a voice from inside the door. Is someone out there? Is someone out what, what are you doing huddled outside? Come, come in, come in, you can see me. And you, the door swings open and there is a, a tall, thin, elderly man uh, wearing wonderful robes. As he looks at the three of you and says, well, what are you doing out there? Come in, quickly. Thank you very much for your hospitality. Come in, come in, come this in. Is, yes, yes. And he steps of course, aside of course, and he, he, he allows you to come in. And as, as you walk Lord. in, 
immediately you're hit with this smell of incense and herbs and things. Uh, you can hear bubbling. There's all these different glass uh, flasks and vials uh, sitting over open flame, uh, different colors and, and noises and sounds and books and scrolls. It looks like extremely organized chaos as uh, this man ushers you in and says, uh, Oh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Who do I have here? My name is uh, Archibald Rast. I am one of the court wizards. Uh, uh, these court days are, are, are unbelievably busy, uh, so I don't have a lot of time. How can I help you? Thank you for your time, Lord Rast. My name is Lord Jasper Dunnington. This is Christoph Reiner, and this is Balto, son of Carson. Welcome, welcome. Greetings. We appreciate your time and your expertise and your infinite wisdom. We are seeking... Uh, powers, any 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 aid that we can in the rejuvenation and restoration of a Mania stone. Ah, Mania stone, you say? Yes. Well, unfortunate timing. It wasn't that long ago that Queen Morgaine halted all search for the lost knowledge of the Mania stone. Uh, you see, there's a lot going on. With the weirdness creeping in. It's it's a high priority, but we have we have. Uh, People who refuse to bend the knee to Camelot, thing that she's dealing with. There are famines and wars and things like that. Uh, so she's uh, unfortunately uh, uh, requested that we stop our search temporarily. Well, uh, the difficulty in making such a decision is that the forebearers. That's what they're called, right? Four dwellers. Four dwellers, damn it. Yeah, it's okay, no worries. The difficulty in that decision is that the four dwellers are active, and we encountered one in the weirdness on our way here. No more than a several hours' journey from the walls of Camelot. You don't say, my boy. Yes, our missed pharaoh was torn in two pieces by one. We barely escaped with our lives. Fascinating. And he runs over to his desk and he pulls out a scroll and he whips out a, uh, a quill and he begins to jot some notes down that you can't see. Interesting, interesting. Well, there is a bit of good news. I personally have not stopped my own research and search. Uh, in secret, of course. I have a little spare time. I am very interested, very interested in learning a bit about what you're looking for. And I might have some good news for you. Me. Well, good news and bad news, of course. We are from a town called Briarbrook, and its men here is mm. failing, and without it, the people, they will not survive. You must help us. Yes, yes, this is a very common problem. It's not uncommon these days to, to hear about these small settlements being swallowed up by the fog. And uh, you're gonna help these towns, right? Like, with Brian Brook, if we don't fix it, the whole fucking town is done for. Dozens dead. Well, that's the, the plan is to help, yes. Good people. Uh, do you have time for a bit of a history lesson? Yes, of course. We Smiling. love history lessons, uh. especially my good friend Christoph here. He'll be very attentive and there will be a quiz later. Christoph? Proceed, my ha good man. Have you ever heard of the wizard Orin? No. Orin. I, it has been so, such a long time since I had my history studies. Please, elaborate, elaborate in greater detail. Well, he was the very last wizard to be directly trained by Merlin himself. Mm. My great, 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 great grandfather also knew Orin. <laughs> You might be asking yourself, what does this mean? Well, we all know that with the death of Merlin and uh, supposedly his line, that a lot of his knowledge has been lost to time. I suspect that the knowledge is not lost, but merely stolen. Which leads me to my next point. Do any of you know of Castle Crow's Nest? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, what? Did you just fucking say? Castle Crow's Nest, my boy. You'll have to forgive. My friend Christoph Reiner, he has a deep fear of castles and crows. I can see by the look on his face, it appears that he knows what I'm talking about. Yes, I know what the fuck Castle Crow's Nest is. Let's watch your tone, Christoph. Why do you fucking utter it? Well, so it sounds like you're aware of Mordred, the necromantic former knight of the round table. Well, allegedly necromantic. Oh, he's necromantic. Hmm? You better fucking believe it. Do you have... 
experience with this knight? Yes, I do. I was on the front lines for years. And I've seen what he's fucking capable of. Really? And what was that? Fucking horrors beyond your imagination. Well, well, well. It's, it's said that he worships Morrigan, goddess of death, war, crows, and black magic. Seems like you believe it. Dark wings, dark deeds. I don't need to my fucking lady, believe it, I fucking see him. Needless to say, this individual might have reason for working with the four dwellers and keeping the men here stones from being reactivated. I believe somewhere deep in Castle Crow's Nest, the stolen knowledge, not the lost knowledge, of these men here stones lies. So the good news is, and the bad news is, it's as simple as waltzing into Castle Crow's Nest and taking it for yourself. It has to be some other way. There's no way that we can go to this place if it truly is haunted by a great necromancer. We are but three weary, broken men. I uh, know no magic. I uh, have only uh, uh, my sling and uh, my herbs. I am but a, a simple healer. There's no way that I could... Uh, uh, siege a tower and uh, is this the only way? He thinks for a moment and he seems sympathetic to your to your words and your, your plight and he says Unfortunately I think so. Stolen and lost knowledge is not an everyday thing. You didn't think this would be easy, did you? I didn't think it had to fucking deal with the fucking Dark Lord, the fucking Raven King. It's unfortunate, yes, but think about what we're trying to accomplish here. It's very clear that you have the same interest that I have. We're talking about the saviors of humanity. If we find a way to fix these stones, you're not just helping your small town of Briarbrook, you're helping all of Avalon. And potentially even greater than that. There's got to be some other fucking way. If King Arthur and Merlin figure this shit out, why can't you? Kristoff, our friend has clearly done the best that he's can. And he's fucking failed at it, apparently. He 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 takes your jab in stride and he, he warmly smiles and he says, Jasper's right. I am but an old man. I have since dedicated myself to knowledge and the betterment of humanity through the study of magics. Well, villages are being swallowed whole by the fucking weirdness. We're all doing what we can. Nope. And please, let me just say, before we say anything further that we do appreciate what the queen has done in these trying times, despite the weirdness swallowing entire villages, the four dwellers lurking in the forests, that her priorities distracted so many not able to bend the knee to Camelot. Yes, yes, no, it's of, of course, of course. Here's the thing. I can certainly help you on your way to Castle Crow's Nest. You know, you know this one especially, Kristoff. It's not an easy journey. It's one of the most northern points of Avalon. Oh. Wholly unlivable by humanity standards. The beings and creatures that reside in Castle Crow's Nest horribly mutated beyond reason. The fog there is thicker than it is anywhere else in Avalon. That being said, I have the ability to produce candles that can at least keep the fog at bay and assist you on your journey getting there. If, of course, you're up for the task. Well, it sounds like we don't have any other choice. And perhaps we can venture forth and hope that it is all just mostly stories that our grandmothers tell us to keep us being good little children. It's tough to remember at times that sometimes fate calls upon you even when you don't want it to. 
I can see the trouble in all of your faces, but it seems also that you know what you must do. If you so desire for me to make the candles, I only require one thing. What is that? To render the fat of a creature that has lived its life in the weirdness. We render it down, we boil it, we extract it, we turn it into a candle, and when you light that black candle, it repels the weirdness. Any creature in the weirdness? A beast? A small rabbit? A, a, a crow? Well, for the number of candles you're going to need, it's going to have to be a pretty big beast. Well, we have faced the creatures of the weirdness just yesterday. Oh, yes? I am sure this will be no small task for us. We will be up to the challenge. Well, lucky for you. I'm sure you've seen the posters all over town. Oh, The yeah. Weird Hunter captain is always looking for help. I'm sure he would pay you too. It would be a matter of you bringing back a caucus to me and I will get to work. Well, we know where to go now. We have all of the answers that we came for. Well, and if you have any more questions upon your return, I'm happy to answer them. I will equip you with the knowledge that you need to make it to Castle Crow's Nest. Thank you for your help. You, you have been incredibly gracious, Lord Rast. We will do this thing for you. Just no. And I mean this in the most reassuring way I can. I understand the gravity of the situation and the task at hand. And as impossible as it might seem, you are all better men for attempting this. Wherever King Arthur is, he and the All Mother smile down upon you. I believe the All Mother is guiding our path. And I believe we will be victorious. You have. My word, on my honor, and on my name, my house, Dunnington. We will do this thing, and it will be not just we will find this creature, but we will discover the secrets of Castle Crow's nest. <laughs> oh, and before you go, and he shuffles over to his desk and he opens a couple drawers. No, 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 where did I put them? <laughs> Here. And he comes back, he shuffles over, and he hands you each a seal that seems to have, uh, uh, it's a seal that you recognize, Jasper. Uh, it's the seal of the Queen of Avalon. Uh, and he tells you, uh, if you need to come back and see me, there's no there's no need to wait in these lines, just to let them know that uh, you can come speak to me directly and show them the seal. Uh, but don't use that to get in any trouble. I don't want the city guard coming to complain to me that some the ruffians are, are waving seals about and causing fights, understood? <laughs> We would never do such a thing. We are not here to cause trouble. We are simple folk from a simple town. All right. If there's anything else I can do for you, please let me know. In How the... many yes? have gone out trying to bring back what you're asking? Well, over the years, more than I can count. All right. Good day. He means to say thank you very much. We appreciate all of your time and your great wisdom, my lord. And he nods and uh, just kind of motions towards the door to let you uh, leave as you would like. Uh, you have no problem <coughs> taking your time walking back through the castle. It is an absolute madhouse in this place, uh, uh, especially for you guys who have never seen this kind of commotion before. And the guards and the, the advisors are, are trying to uh, communicate and move people uh, the best they can. You hear whispers of people saying, when will I meet the queen? When will I meet the queen? And the advisors kind of brush off those questions and, and funnel people into different uh, lines and things like that. And uh, by the time that you are done with all this ordeal, it is, it is already evening. You've spent a whole day uh, dealing with the bureaucracy of this open court day, and you will have the evening to yourself um, uh, to decide how you want to tackle the, uh, the task at hand. Um, but you do know uh, that there is a, a way to receive help if you so desire. You are also uh, very aware of Archibald's uh, direction that the more rendered fat he receives, the more of these candles he will be able to make you, and the better off you will be on your quest. You don't want to run out of candles at the wrong moment. 
uh, walking through the, the city, you will uh, arrive back at the Queen's Respite, unless there's anything else that you would like to do before getting there. And uh, I'll go right back to the Queen's Respite. Yeah, yeah, and... and, and I would, yeah, I would join. Yep. Yeah, yeah that's right. and I think you realize, uh, you know, what needs to be done, and uh, you might be ready for another meal. It's been a long day. Again, the, this isn't, um, these aren't like physically, maybe maybe for Jasper a little bit, standing is, is physically tough for him, but this isn't horribly physically demanding. It's more mentally draining. And, and you're ready to, to rest the evening before you decide what you're going to do the next day to fulfill this request for Archibald. And I thought the court of Castle Misswood was complicated. This is... This is a whole nother level. Can we, uh... Can we draft a letter to, uh... home? Mm. Do we trust a courier to make it back? Uh, couriers don't always come to town often. I... I'm happy to write the letter. I think we need to tell him to leave. Where will they go? I don't fucking know. They're... it's... For as many healthy people there are in that town, there are just as many greybeers old and firm sick. Can we tell them to try to make it here, or or can we... Uh, and through the woods! Well, no. we, perhaps we can... They uh, don't like him making it through the woods. It's what about like. candle? Uh, we, we, we make candles with, uh, with uh, Archibald and uh, send those via courier, and then they come here. There's no hope for Briarbrook if we do not achieve salvation. Right. That much is clear. Oh, I just Do you not hear him? Fucking believe that for all their fucking knowledge, they have to rely on Mordred. And I'll spit on the ground. That the Raven King is the only one with the fucking knowledge and power to reactivate these things? All of the power of the wizards is... It's all what people believe. If you act like he did fucking wizards. Oh, I'm a duddery old fool. And we believe that he has that power because he acts as if he does have that power. Did he display one use of magic? No. Power is where the people believe, Kristoff. People believe, as you have said, perhaps I am the skeptic. If any of these, the small folk of Avalon are as petrified of the rumors of the Raven King. That is where the power lies. They're not fucking rumors. It's real. Well, then we will have to face it one way or another. We have no choice. You asked the same question that I was going to ask, Kristoff. I... The way he used his words, suspected that many more had been sent to the castle before us. And when he spoke of the candles, I assumed there was no hope as well. There is a glimmer of hope. <coughs> the we are three bitter, spiteful old men. It's tough to kill people like us. It's the good and the kind and the just that die young. People like us live forever. We, there may be a chance that we find this knowledge and we bring it back to Briarbrook. And no one has to go anywhere. I'm not worried about the candles. I'm sure we could go out there, kill a fucking beastie, and drag its ass back to that stupid fuck. But we could have 42 million candles. And we'd have to get into the castle itself. The Crow's Nest Castle. It's a undead sorcerer. Maybe we can parlay with him. Powerful necromancers. 
Armies of fucking undead as far as I'm concerned. It was rumors. And his men were hardy. Took twice as many blows to fucking fell. Are you saying that they were walking corpses? I don't know what the fuck they were. And I didn't believe it until... Yeah, I had to... Escort. Uh, commander of the Rook Knights. And that's when... <coughs> that's when my battalion was wiped out. You know what a fucking Scarlet Worm is? You ever heard of one? No. Have you ever fucking seen one? Giant fucking monstrous worm beast creature. And it wasn't even a living one. We were... Uh, caught by one of his necromancers. And he raised a fucking dead one. Wiped out over two dozen men. Some fucking miracle, a cruel fucking joke that I'm still alive. And there was no warning. No warning besides the fucking crows. So, who knows what else he has defending his pretty little castle. Then we will keep our eyes to the sky and avoid the crows and the ravens and the rooks. I forgive me if I do not fear the snarks and grumpkins and the rumors of the small folk. I've seen the dark deeds of the hearts of men, simple men and women, living, mortal, flesh and blood. I've seen the life goes out, go out of people I love dearest, people I was sworn to protect, gasping for air, choking in their sickbed. To me, that's far more terrifying than any sort of corpse given second life or any sort of malevolent monster worm. The people of Briarbrook cannot move. Only our efforts can guarantee they all live. We have to sacrifice, to push, to do anything that we can to help. If Caspar the boy that I treat in Briarbrook, he takes medicine every morning to help with his ailment. There is another treatment I could give him. Rendered puppy lard is the ma main ingredient of this potion. That's a bridge too far. You say puppy lard? Yes. A guarantee. But I save for him his dog in hopes that it grow up with him. I would certainly hope so. We have to go and get the Lord to save this village. <laughs> Sorry. You know, Balto, uh, sometimes you leave me speechless with the after all shit you fucking <laughs> threw out. Stop. Stop saying that shit. <laughs> Need to stop saying odd shit. <laughs> let, let, let boy dog live. You know, I am glad that you have let the boy's dog live. But there is no hope for Briar Brook if we do not go on this quest for the castle. If we do not find the secrets within, we have no choice. Sacrifice, huh? There's nothing noble in that. The town's dead either way. And if we go on a mission, odds would say so are we, but... I'm sick of running. Don't call it sacrifice. We are not noble-hearted heroes. I plan on using any kind of victory to make an alliance with the Queen and get 
the frost bees ejected from my castle and preferably hanged. And then what? Who gives a fuck about the frost bees? I do. I don't even care about Castle Blackmont. I just want them dead. Without a home. And then I can die happy. They are the ones that killed Benedict. But what does it matter? That's what you say. I know. The gentlemen that we met, that you failed to meet out in the alley or in the thoroughfare, believed me to be the culprit. If someone told a nasty lie and destroyed everything that you had ever known and loved, would you want to live and let live? It depends on what you mean by live and let live. If you mean, just tune it out, ignore it, and try to move on, then yeah, that's what I would do. That's what I have done. That's what this is for. And that is another silver lining. We know we need to find the Order of Weird Hunters and its guard captain. We need to find the creature in the weird and capture it, bring it back to the wizard. And then maybe then we can go north and recover the secrets of the men here. And that is exactly a summation of what you need to do. But in the meantime, we don't have to spend any more obols on anything other than ourselves. Yes. Uh, Yen, you have the evening to talk amongst yourselves, and if, when you're ready, uh, you know that uh, your comfortable beds await you. Uh, you can do anything else that you'd like to before you go to sleep, um, but uh, Balto has laid it out pretty clear exactly what needs to happen. Uh, you you have you will have the option of of, of certainly uh, striking out on your own to, to perhaps uh, see what's out there in the weirdness and. and fell a beast yourself, but you also know that this order of weird hunters exists, and they are always looking for help, and they pay. Uh, so is there anything else you'd like to do before you go to sleep? I would spend the evening socializing. Okay. I will spend the evening, I'm not going up to the back to the room. <laughs> okay. I will be in my cups, and if, if, if uh, Balto and Kristoff want to be there or not. I'll just be sitting, I'll just post up in the corner somewhere and I'll just be drinking. Okay. Alone or, or not. I feel restless. I <coughs> am struggling with all of the emotions of the challenge that confronts us and I am overwhelmed by the noise of this space. And so what I would normally do at night is go and search for herbs, but okay. I don't have a forest to go to. Yeah, it's, uh, that'd be very tough here in Camelot. So I will endeavor to take walks around blocks and try and sort of get a, get some legs pumping and moving just to wear out my energy. For sure. And, and you're able to go for a walk and you stick to where it's well lit. You, you're the, obviously yeah, I'm the very of careful. the city that you're in is, is doesn't seem to be like there's a lot of crime. I mean, you pass guards, right? They're they're on watch. There are people who are responsible for keeping the town safe around, and you are able to do some laps and get some fresh air, for sure. If any animals happen to come my way, they hiss and run away. But uh... <laughs> you you would see the occasional <laughs> you would see the occasional cat, uh, but nothing. Maybe a dog. It's it, there aren't a ton of. You know, any rats that exist in the city would would run at the at the noise of a, of a human walking around, uh, even at night. You might hear them rattling around in the alleys, but you wouldn't even catch sight of them. Uh, dare I ask, Kristoff, uh, what, what your plan is? Or I'm you just, just socializing. You're just socializing. I'm just seeing who I meet. You know, yeah. having drinks. And you you notice uh, a few faces from the night before. I'll help uh, Bridget. You know. Clean up if she needs help. Or, sure, you know, whatever sure. Else. You you met, you see a few uh, faces from the night before, uh, but a lot of faces you don't recognize. And even the entertainment this evening is different than it was previously. Alexander the Bard is not here this tonight. They have a different bar. 
Uh, and you, Trevor. yeah, you 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 actually don't prefer his music as as much. It's yeah. it's not uh, it's not as 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 lovely as Alexander's music was. And uh, you, the people who do recognize you, it takes them a little time to warm up to you, but they they recognize that you are uh, not. Uh, a drunk like your friend Jasper was, and you don't seem to be causing trouble. And the people that you uh, socialize with, they warm up to you over time, and the people who didn't recognize you from the night before have no problem talking to you, and you, you spend the evening socializing. Perfect. Uh, and if there's anything else you'd like to do, otherwise, you could go to sleep. Eventually, I make um, my way to bed. I would try to help Kristoff when I'm sufficiently drunk. <laughs> Sure. I would well, like. We to, really don't need it all, Peter. I would like to go up to while well, maybe while he's chatting up Brigitte or Bridget. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll like walk up and I'll say, "Ah, Sir Christoph." Oh God. <laughs> Dunning, Young lady, do shouldn't, you shouldn't you be in bed? Do you know that you are speaking? You've been speaking all night to a heroic night. Oh, ah, uh, uh, good evening, my lord. Uh, is everything is everything all right? Everything, everything to you? is delightful. The venison pie, outstanding. Well, yes, Mr. Mr. Kristoff is is keeping me lovely company, and it's been a busy night, but he's been he's been talking my ear off and 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 keeping me company in between pouring drinks. And Tell noble, the stories of the old days. Noble company, yes. But before you were knighted, and risen to. Even be landed, actually, after this great quest. He has his own castle he will be returning to, yes. His own castle? His own you know, castle. I'll try not to, you know, brag too much. It's not really my thing. Yes, a, ca a landed knight. It's no lord, but, you know, it's he has the spirit of a knight, a true knight. Noble, fair, true, <clears throat> chivalrous. Always you... willing to help a damsel in distress. Oh, yes. my. Yes. Have you ever been to the uh, to the old Brokes a region uh, northwest of here? No, I've spent my whole life here in Camelot. The biggest towers you've ever seen. You see King Arthur uh, in the glory days of this land built these great big watchtowers all in the northwest, and uh, that's where I'm from. And. Uh, you know, I didn't want to t talk too much about it, but... Uh, yeah, he is very, very humble. My castle lives in just a little <laughs> valley between two great towers, and so if you happen to see my shield tomorrow morning, uh, you'll see two towers painted right on it. So, uh, that's why. You know, I try to stay humble, play it off like I'm a self-sword, but... You know, Dunnington, you spilled my beans. Well, I just, it is, you see it as there are people as you saw last night. There are people who know me and want to kill me. And so we try to keep a low profile and I try not to get Kristoff's very, very well-known and wealthy family. Uh, try to get them tangled up in my business, you understand. She is, she is enamored with these stories. She's very clearly impressed. Uh, but she's often stopping you to help people, and you're you're picking up the story. You're starting it. You're stopping it. She's moving. She's she's obviously working. She can't just sit here and listen to your stories all night. Uh, but she's happy to oblige and listen. And she seems she seems enamored. And uh, uh, well, uh, yes, uh, about that. Please please don't cause any more trouble here. I, un I understand you're very important people, but we, we can't be having fights. The, 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 the inn owner would not be happy with that. At, All that, at that moment, the door crashes open and two guards are pushing <laughs> pushing Balto in. I thought this was Avalon. I thought this was Avalon. <laughs> That doesn't Incredible. happen. Incredible. <laughs> what is the great say, meal? <laughs> oh, so <good. laughs> Avalonian meal? <laughs> Um, you know I, couldn't, your well. I couldn't hold yeah. myself. Can, can we uh, take a break for the love of God? Well, I was waiting for you guys to sleep, and then okay. we yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, With that, <laughs> I, <laughs> we don't have to argue yeah. this. We're gonna be here until two in the morning. I'm kidding. I will, uh, when I feel like that she believes that he is a knight uh, with land. She I'll, believes it. I will uh, just kind of smile. Well, I am going to rest my weary legs and sit by the fire. It's in my state, I get cold very easily, so you have a good night, young lady. And you I'll, too, my lord. I'll hobble over to the fire and I'll just sit alone, maybe if there's like a chair there, 
and I'll just have my flagon <laughs> with my cup and I'll just drink. Absolutely. Just staring into the fire or into my cup. <laughs> you uh, you continue to socialize yeah, until you're I hang out. until you're uh, you guys are, are very satisfied and want to go to bed. <laughs> I exactly I attempt to pull off a heist. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, <Lord laughs> Lord. no! I eventually I come back. I see uh, if if. Uh, uh, Jasper's still awake. I'll sit by the fire with him for a little while. Eventually, I make my way to bed. My goal is to not sleep in the room tonight. Yeah. (laughs) Depending on my success level, that would determine what time I return to the room. All right. Uh, All right. Here's all I'll say. Uh, here's One in the morning, do. two in the morning, seven in the morning. Do I get to morning. give him a leadership? I, no. no. <laughs> you know. Depends on what you say. You got to RP this. Uh, I did. Okay, so yeah. you actually, you RP'd it very well. Leadership uh, in this case, though. I don't, I don't know if that's right. It doesn't really apply. Yeah, no. Leadership right. doesn't really apply. Yeah, I'm thinking of human um, behavior. Let me take a look at inspiration. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Give uh, give me a, give me a conviction roll if you have inspiration and cur- if you have discipline and courage. Oh, well, uh, you can use that. Otherwise, use inspiration. Oh, uh, okay. Don't you roll yet? Oh no! Oh, yeah. me? me. You, he's oh, he's oh, trying to. Sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry. You hold, you, you hold your dice. We're finding out if Eleven. you get a bonus. I see. Okay. For your um, tracks of land. You you do feel like the stories that you are telling and the the wing. <laughs> I, there's no other way to say this. The wing manning that you've done <laughs> uh, for Kristoff is is working. And Kristoff, uh, you feel inspired, and you think that uh, the stories are are working on this this woman. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe we're doing this. Um, <laughs> then what, it's I up need, to you, what I need you to do is roll for me a a creativity roll, a communication. If you have charm as your uh, discipline, you may use that. Otherwise, it's creativity and communication. So you'll one d ten plus communication plus plus uh, creativity. I'm gonna use all of my survival points. <laughs> no, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, <laughs> did you use three? Did you it. use one? Holy uh, so shit. Did I use one. Use Thanks, the survival chat. point. Thanks, chat. To reroll. Yes. Okay. For getting six, Kristoff, six of your fucking Kristoff twins. <laughs> and then you're ten. You got a ten. Ten. Okay. Um, you can tell that she seems to be taking a liking to you. And she's she's laughing at your stories and she's having a good time, but you can also tell that she's she's working hard, like she's at her job, yeah, right? Know. You know, and it's like the night kind of winds on, and you as the patrons begin to leave the bar, you talk and you talk, and and it's as if you're old friends and you're getting along so well uh, that you almost don't notice that the the the, the inn has empty and it is only the remaining two of you. And as uh, she looks at you and laughs, she she says, "Oh, Sir Christoph, you are so wonderful." And oh, you I don't just, have to call me Sir. This, this has been uh, well. You're a knight. You you're a knight with land. Oh, I know, but I'm trying not to get a big head about it. You know? She she reaches out and she says, uh, "I think what you're doing is so noble." And she she t- she puts a hand uh, on your cheek, and her hand oh. lingers. And there's this. Uh, the slight pause, and she says, but I have an early morning, and I, I have to get ready for work. No, oh, no, you're right. You're things right. don't start. Things don't... Me too. Things don't stop just because we're having fun. Nope, there's lots to do. I agree. Uh, i got an early morning as well. Uh, she, she begins to clean up, and she says... She horrible looks at, mutated monsters to kill, you know. <laughs> I may not survive. <laughs> <laughs> She looks at you. I don't say that. She looks at you. I don't say that. I don't say and that. there's this there's this moment. There's a there's a pause that that kind of hangs in the I air. Don't say that. And the pause isn't awkward. It's just it's a moment that yeah. she thinks and she says, I'm glad that you're going to be here for a week. Good night, Sir Christoph. Good night, my lady. Um, Baltimore and I are sitting by the fire. <laughs> yeah, we're watching. Also <laughs> <that's right. laughs> yeah. oh, 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 the fire. Yeah, yeah. And uh, she goes in the back and continues her duties, but she seems genuinely pleased to have spent the evening talking to you, and has, uh, you know, like she's taking a liking to you. It didn't work, did it? What do you mean it didn't work? Wenches love knights. Well, she's not a wench. She's a 
tavern keeper. <laughs> 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 Jeff I and I burst into howling laughter. I love you guys. <laughs> We're hugging oh, each other and like crying, crying with laughter. Uh, we are. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you all go to bed I, after you you have a you you have a uh, a jest at your at your friend Kristoff's expense. You have one last round before you uh, head up to your room and you uh, you rest for the evening. Uh, so you you go to sleep and uh, you 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 have your task at hand. Balto laid it out, you know, very openly that you you know what needs to be done. You have to hunt a creature that is uh, existed in the weird and large enough to make as many of these weird candles uh, as you know you possibly can. Uh, you are able to potentially elicit some help uh, from the order of the weird hunters uh, that exist in this city. Uh, they're always posting up posters and, and looking for help, and um, you are quite confident that given the opportunity, they, they might take your, your offer, take you up on your offer. Uh, you all heal to uh, more health points uh, for taking a long rest and having meals and, and resting in a, in a really nice place. And, and I would more. take the hour. Two total. Uh, and then, again, if uh, your good friend Balto is going to take the hour in the morning to continue to treat your wounds, uh, depending on the rolls, you may heal additionally. Okay. Hold on. Roll let really me, well. Let me just... Hold on. Let me just make my heal, so, heal pool here. G-O-B-C. So, yeah. A. Stick in. A. Four. Minus Put one, minus two, one. minus three. All right. I will roll first for Jasper. Okay. Oh. I knock. I killed Jasper. Unfortunately. Uh, you can use one of my scout dead. points to reroll. He's up. dead. Uh, no, I don't let's know if I need this it. This is a pool scout point. No, no, no. That's a seventeen. Still, I don't. I don't like it. Like a like it. it's if if it's binary one or zero. I think seventeen's gonna get. It, oh, right? okay. Maybe uh, I don't know. Seventeen. Next roll. Seventeen. I'm gonna go, Kristoff. The crit, oh. let's confirm oh, well, the crit. Confirm the crit, confirm the crit. Oh, the negative, no. the, the opposite happens. Okay, no, you're good. You ignite into flames. You ignite into flames. <laughs> so 10 plus. Oh, this is just a wrench. What was the total? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, max. 10, 10 yeah, max. plus 12 is 22. 22. Damn, okay. Uh, which one was mine? Oh, I, I rolled that. So I no, have no, to. No, no, your, your you sure? roll, no, your roll was the new one, which was a. Your die got knocked over. Oh. So roll again. Just roll again. That's fine. It wasn't the one, though. No need to panic. A crit. Ten. A cr roll wow. again. Wow. Confirm? No. Uh, no confirm. So close. Uh, 22. So, 22. so I, I'm really fucking deco uh, I'm decoctioning this up. You will all heal one more additional health point as okay. you trend tends to your wounds. So Miracle one, worker. Two, Let's yeah, fucking three. go. So three um, in total. Three. Uh, and then what yes. is your... How, does anybody oh. still have wounds left? I do. I do. How I many? Two. Three. Two wounds, three wounds. Two. Derek? Uh, I have four wounds left. What the? You got like crit, or not crit, but like yeah, I I started tonight off with nine, and then you took no, a, you you took, right? a, you took a huge hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I was here, and then I lost. So I should have oh, had only one. And okay, with nine. Yes, you would have four. Okay, because yeah. I had eight. All right, I think. Awesome. Uh, you take the hour, you clean yourselves up, you get ready for the day, you do your morning rituals. Again, you might uh, head down uh, for, for light breakfast before uh, congregating and deciding what your course of action is going to be. I start with a little bit of scale of the Hydra. Yeah, 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 of course. You know. <laughs> That's very funny. Uh, it, it, I think that we, I would want to spend at least one more day resting, seeing that everyone's I agree. wounded. Do we think that we can find the weird hunter captain, uh, or do we need to rush? If we can spend another day, I would rest I'm, here. I mean, don't the posters say, I mean, they're always looking for help. I think we just rest, maybe we stock up, and, you know, maybe look for new weapons or armor, <sighs> or a new shield for me. I would go down the street to Apothecary and see what I could see. There is much to learn there. We haven't had a Good old fashioned shopping episode in a long time. Let us spend the next hour and a half our being this. <laughs> I could investigate House Frosby and see how their standing is with the crown. I suppose I could pick up a side gig, wrestling steer, <laughs> down by delivery. 
Wait, are you saying that we can turn this into like 10 <laughs> sessions? <laughs> That's exactly what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> they call me the wrestler. <laughs> You would all know that uh, you absolutely could take another day to rest before you seek out the uh, Order of Weird Hunters. Uh, they're not hard to find. They're always looking for help. They basically go out on hunts daily. Uh, right. It's their job. That's what they're doing. They're trying to protect Avalon. Uh, they're trying to keep the city of Camelot safe. Uh, obviously, they do it for coin. They're not doing it for free. But they are you know, doing it for a good purpose. Um, if you would like to uh, explore and um, potentially shop, the only thing I want to keep in mind is that I have your current tab total up to 20 <gasps> at a bare minimum. Uh, for food and drinks for the previous days. Oh God! Um, so uh, twenty plus fourteen plus one. That includes the fourteen, the fifteen tip, the sixteen for three drinks, seventeen for three drinks, three more for food. We tipped fifteen. No, you no, tipped no, no. One, one more on top one. of the fourteen. Oh, I'm, so I'm doing a running total. Got it. So I'm at twenty, and that's being generous because I didn't charge uh, for the drinks that you guys probably consumed last night. So yeah. keep in mind that you do have a running tab, uh, even if you paid the fourteen up front. Uh, you know, there, you, you know. So I think it's reasonable to just say that we're out. That's, take that's the extra less five. Than one well. No, no, you had forty. You had forty something. We had forty <clears throat> uh, when 40. we got to the end. And, and I'm 40. not shopping. I'm going to the apothecary. Oh, that's right. Because you feet. tipped. You tipped the bard. So I, three. I would say you have. Let's. We'll call it. We'll call it twenty three. Was the running tab? You have seventeen left currently. You have seventeen left. Oh. Because it, it, you tipped three, which brings from forty three to forty. And then the current running tab is the 14 up front, and we'll just say you paid up your tab, you have, you, which is 23. You have 17 nobles left. This money goes fast. Yeah, it does. I, I don't know. I think maybe we'll just stock up in some rations, and we're not going to buy any weapons or armor with that. That's correct. No, but we need, we need more coin. I, if, if I can't afford to drink tonight. How do we get more coin in a city? Well, why don't we offer our services to the weird hunters, and maybe they'll pay us along with giving us what we need. You think they'll give us an advance for tonight? Oh, I doubt they're going to lend the money before we fucking go risk life and limb. Oh. You, you're very confident that Kristoff is right, but you know that with the 70 nobles that you have, you have enough money for alcohol okay. tonight. So you're not, like, completely panicked. Yeah. You're not gonna go get. The I got the shakes here. right now. Yeah, yeah. And so I said a little bit more of the hydra. I scale the hydra, you know. So it, it's up to you guys. If you would like to shop around, I would encourage us not to RP that. And and I'm happy to to tell you what there is. Uh, but you can absolutely take an extra day before you go seek out the viewer of weird hunters to get that last bit of rest uh, and one more night of drinking, uh, much to Jasper's uh, uh, happiness. Uh, before you you head out and uh... again we don't have to RP this so it's really just tell me if Balto learns anything the apothecary. at the apothecary yeah if there's something in the city that would have piqued his interest maybe a, a something that he wants to come back and buy if all, it, he he's experiencing wonders that he's never experienced before and so seeing plants and herbs and her base, he would he would want to hold on to those memories as some like a a, a star, uh, something that he can pursue after he rescues everything and everything turns out so great. Absolutely, you you have some time on your hands and you visit an apothecary. You visit several different shops. Uh, one of them is called the All Mothers Embrace, uh, and they sell all sorts of stuff. Uh, that a medicine like man, medicine man like you would be absolutely interested in. Oh. Uh, they sell all sorts of. Uh, oops, I question. I question that. them really constantly good. about it. Yeah, and you talk, and they you, they're happy to share knowledge with you. Uh, the quick like here's the information <clears throat> that you gather is that you can buy potions for thirty opals a piece. They're oh, not cheap. Jesus. Uh, there, there's a bag of healing essences, which is something that absolutely catches your eye. It's all it's it's a pouch of all sorts of uh, exotic uh, plants and uh, minerals and and and, and uh, salves and things and solutions that you would absolutely be able to use. Uh, it's it's fifty opals. And uh, but it would it, you you understand just by looking at it and talking to this person the healing powers that you would you would be able to gather from this healing essence. Mm. And lastly, they mention uh, you see these small crystalline bottles, beautifully shaped, uh, almost like the shape of a tear. And when you look at this liquid, the way that it shines, it is it is almost ethereal in nature. And they tell you that it's called Tears of the All Mother, uh, mm. but there are a hundred ovals of vial. 
And, and, and they're not entirely sure uh, that they're able to convey exactly what they do, other than that it has unbelievable healing properties. And that's what that would have taken my whole day. Yeah, you would have been... I've been person... asking about the plants and where they got them yeah. and how the network of, of, of creation uh, uh, spreads out across Avalon and how it makes its way to Camelot. That's... Yeah, it, assuming they don't get tired of the fact that, that it's obvious I'm not buying anything, I would just ask, ask, ask. As me. long as they don't have anyone in the shop, they're more than happy to have conversation with you for hours. And you enjoy that. And that's what you do with your day. I make anyone some good else? friends. I would just admire all of the weapons and armor that I can't afford. And uh, Fair. <coughs> then I just help Jasper with whatever he needs. I would try to do the opposite of what the wizard said. Oh. And not the opposite, but we, basically, I'm not waving it around trying to like be unsubtle about it, but I'm kind of trying to maybe sit in court and maybe I'll go back to the castle and I'll probably try to maybe sit into the court if there is a public, if there is any kind of public audience. Uh, it might not, if there isn't, I'll try to basically use the queen seal to get into an area where I can kind of listen to the, um, uh, Oh my God! What the fuck is this? What, the term of, like, of the audience of basically where the issues of my region would have been? Yeah, and basically kind of think like get a lay of the land and get an update of my home. Yeah, uh, that's what I would do. You're, you're able to do this when you when you get there. You notice that it's not nearly as busy as the day before. It, it, this is not every single person you know in the city trying to get to the same location at the same time, uh, and it is not uncommon for these. Uh, or these these royals to do business, some of their business openly, like you said, to the public. And you know, you might not be able to contribute or comment or gain an audience, but you're able to listen, especially with the seal that Archibald gave you, uh, the guards and and the, the the people who are conducting business in the castle, um, in the keep, uh, do not have any issue with you. Uh, and and there are other people who also uh, seem to be of high noble standing who are listening, taking notes, uh, maybe passing letters. You know, delivering uh, papers and 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 you you do hear a bit about your hometown and uh, it's it's brief, right? They have a lot to get through, and again, they don't do all of their business open in the open. Uh, but you are able to sit there for as long as you like and and just absorb the information that's kind of going on in in the castle's day to day business. Uh, and I'll eventually I'll get back early and start sure. drinking. You yeah. know. If there's uh, nothing else that you would like to do. Uh, you can spend the <clears throat> evening again uh, and just rest up and, and be prepared. And, and with the wounds that you have left, you're nearly full strength. After yeah. several days of enjoying yourself. I think we would eat, sleep, and uh, go to the uh, Mist Walkers in the morning, or Mist awesome. Hunters. Yes, the Weird Hunters. Weird Hunters. <laughs> it's all good. After an hour of healing. Yeah, so then you'll all heal two more. And then uh, when he bolted to make his roll, roll okay, that's time. it. I'm full up. Jasper, I'm. I don't need it. Okay. Uh, well, you get a 17. Okay. Thank you. Christoph, you get a 16. Balto, you get a 21. Yeah, that's all. That's one more for everybody. Anybody else who still has wounds okay. on their sheet, you get an additional. So total of three healing. Uh, Jasper, you're I'm able full. to uh, take the, the dressing off. Balto takes the dressing off, and your wound, where your stab wound looks much better. It's not 100%, but it's getting there. Yeah. There's no infection. Uh, all of the bruising and swelling that Kristoff had experienced has gone down a lot. Uh, you're not worried about, uh, you know, any kind of clotting or anything like that in, in, a, in a bad way. Um, and you all feel better, you know, even in your, your rusty adventurer state where you're slowly getting back into things you feel good you you feel like the opulence and this little bit extra uh of of uh, hospitality that you've received over these days has really done uh, a good a good amount of i will enjoy some wine yeah i'll probably take a skin of it yeah you uh, you take some for the road take a skin of it for the road why not? And I will have a morning uh, wine with Yes. Jasper just to uh We may die today. Earth. Yes, we go back back to the weird. But with more experienced men. Not by ourselves as we were. 
on the way to Camelot after Leo. You have this conversation as you're walking through mm -hmm. the city, and, and it's not hard for you to find where you're going. The posters have directions. You can ask people. They point. You know, they 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 are uh, happy to hear that you're looking for the weird hunters. The, these people know the good work that they do, and anyone who is willing to help the weird hunters is good in their book. And you actually proceed uh, to the eastern, sorry, the western gate of Camelot. And you know that this Weird Hunters, uh, the Order of Weird Hunters Lodge is just outside the gate. Uh, they have their own stables, they have horses, they have equipment. They are well stocked for the jobs that they do uh, using the coin that they are paid by uh, Camelot to protect them. It's maybe 30 minute walk, taking your time at your leisure before you arrive at the uh, before you arrive at the, 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 you know, a few a few hundred feet away as you're approaching, you can see the horses. I'm going to stop right there and thank Nuclear Blue for a 30... What? 30? 30 oh, sub bombs. Holy Let me smokes. Let to this so that we can see. We it. might unlock the Reximo. Oh Holy my shit. God. I'm Woo! sure Nuclear Blue would be very happy about that. We are so 30. close. Thank you. We are so close to our next goal of 2,600. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good God. <laughs> Holy cow. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Very generous. <clears throat> oh, sorry. I'm going to get back to this. Uh, as you approach this building, uh, again, you, you see that they kind of have their own makeshift stables. There are horses grazing. They look well cared for. There are men and women who are dressed in leathers uh, and... They all seem to be. They all seem to have a metal emblem uh, on their on their leathers on their chest. Uh, you can't quite tell what it is from here, uh, but they all. It all seems to signify that they're a part of the same order. Uh, they're running around. They're taking care of the horses. There's some training in the yard. Uh, there's not many of them. Uh, maybe only, you know, a half dozen that you see working here. Uh, and as you approach, they 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 notice you, uh, but they don't stop what they're doing. Uh, and. Uh, you are able to walk up to the door and, and enter this uh, order of weirdness, weird hunters, if you would, if you would so like to. Jo Jasper, do yeah. you think we have to ride horses? Can can you ride horse? I can manage it. Can you ride a horse? Horses and I do not agree. I think it'll re kick you off and kick you in the head. Yes, like bull, like cow. If you, your stories confuse me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, if we need to get a horse, maybe there's they'll have one that is very docile and not aggressive. Let us hope. All right, Dunnington. You have the, the emblem, the seal? I do. All right, do your thing. I will try to find someone as I, that looks like they're in charge, that has the aura of a leader. Yeah, uh, you, you, enter, you enter this lodge, this building. And as you walk in, uh, the smell of leather and uh, is heavy in the air with cooking meat. Uh, they're they're obviously, you know, living in these these kind of makeshift barracks. They they kind of live out just outside the uh, the city walls. Uh, this is where they're stationed, and you can see beds where these recruits uh, and some people choose to stay here and sleep. Uh, and it is on the wall opposite of the door that you walk in, all the way across the room. Uh, you see a man who is older. Than, than the men and women that you've seen uh, thus far. He uh, looks a little bit more distinguished. He stands up tall, his back is very straight. Uh, he is also wearing leathers and he has one of these metal emblems on his chest, but his appears to, to be a little bit more ornate. Uh, he's also wearing a hat. As he turns around, uh, you can see that his face is a bit scarred. Uh, clearly uh, a symbol of the battles and, and the creatures that he's fought. fought. Uh, and as he lays eyes on you, uh, he, he shouts almost a little too loudly. Uh, By the All Mother, what do we have here? New recruits? Yes, you have that right. We have the seal of the queen here. We are on important business to slay and retrieve the corpse of a beast of the weirdness. Uh, a bit old for recruits, but uh, welcome, welcome. My name is Oliver Ezra, Weird Hunter Captain. We'd like to join you on today's mission, if you don't mind. 
Hopefully the extra manpower will uh, make it a little safer than usual. What we lack in youthful vitality, we make up in hard-earned experience. He uh, looks at you very closely, and he, he kind of sizes each of you up. Well, we never turn away any help around here. It's tough. It's difficult. What are we, what are we looking for? What is your goal? The biggest beast that we can find. Something that has been corrupted by the weirdness that's lived its life, and can be used to be rendered down into a candle. He holds out his hand uh, as if to, to want to examine the seal. I will reach into my uh, my uh, surcoat and I'll pull out the seal and I'll hand it to him. Man, man, man. You'll see man. we're all in order. Uh, did old Archibald send you? Yes. Yes, he did. Lord Rast uh, has sent us on this quest and we are also in need of coin. However, we may be of use to you all. Yeah. Weird candles, you say? Yes. Well, of course, of course. Uh, good luck has it. We've been tracking a weird bear for several days. Yeah. It's a big beast. Are you up for the challenge? Bear yeah. should be easy. I used to join my lord father on hunts, and we took down many bears, boars, elk. We can certainly handle the bear. By the old mother, I don't think you heard me. A weird bear. What's so weird about it? These are creatures that spend their lives in the weirdness, amongst the trees and the mist. Uh-huh. Mutations, just like the humans, make them far fiercer. Well, uh, old uh, Leo mentioned weird wolves. Probably something similar. Ha! The bears make the wolves look like puppies. All right. Nothing we can't handle. Good. That's what I like to hear. When do we leave? We can leave in a few hours. We'll ready the horses. Uh, knowing old Archibald and these candles, we're going to have to bring back the old corpse. We'll attach a sled to the horses, draw it back. All right. I'm happy to help get ready. Uh, and he starts to direct you uh, to things that you can do. Uh, he, he basically tells you what's going to happen is that he's going to take um, five of the weird hunters will be joining you. Only some of them will be actually joining you on the hunt. Mm. The ones that will remain on the outskirts of the uh, woods are there to watch the horses, watch the sleds, be ready to receive the uh, the the kill provided that you are successful and help everybody get back. After uh, maybe an hour or so, uh, you've packed up the um, you've packed up all of the supplies. You've ready the horses. Uh, you won't be riding them. These these horses are merely oh, being you. used for uh, you, beasts of burden to, to drag back the the carcass of this potentially monstrous creature. And uh, you are all ready to head out, provided that there's nothing else to do. He, he gives you information of what it's going to be like to potentially hunt this creature. You know, it's not something that um, is easy. Uh, but these are not stealthy creatures. It's a huge, monstrous bear. They leave tracks. They they know how to track them. It's just something they've done before. Uh, and with all things uh, going your way, hopefully there will not be many casualties. Um, I am very comfortable around the horses. You'll probably kind of see a general, like, a surprising tenderness uh, with the horses as I will, you know, help saddle them. And I'm able to get them, you know, bridled and and, and ready to go, helping however I can um, with, I guess, surprising dexterity um, as, as I'm able to. Yeah. I'm just checking and double checking uh, what I have in terms of my supplies, making sure that everything is where I need it should I need to grab it quickly. Okay. And yeah, I would I would just sort of I would lend my aid in, you know, if there's anything that needs to be lifted or moved Absolutely. or carried or tied off, like I would have, I would help with that. Uh, and once everything seems to be in place, uh, Captain Ezra looks at you all and says, Are we ready to head out? I am ready. Yes. Then let us all begin. Right. 
and you you walk alongside the horses, and, and the captain is taking the lead, and uh, the other four weird hunters that are, are with him uh, kind of guide the horses, and, you know, Balta is a little weary, staying staying a little farther away from the horses. They don't seem to, they eye you up, like, and, and, you know, you know to keep your distance from these horses. They're not, they don't seem to be comfortable around you. Um, and <laughs> it is only a few hours' walk before you... Uh, you, you, you're, you're making this walk, and it's very similar to the walk that you made coming into the city. As you walk farther and farther and farther away from the city, you start to see the tree line re reappear in front of you. And that familiar kind of sinking feeling that you get, um, you know, from, uh, from being near the weird begins to kind of creep in. You, you remember, uh, sorry, one moment. Mm -hmm as I am just making sure that the music is. You you get a familiar sinking feeling as your eyes settle upon the tree line. And even from this distance, you start to see a little bit of the mist hovering around the base of the trees. And even though you're standing in this field and the sun above you is shining, you almost start to feel like it's a little bit darker near these woods than you'd like. All right. Are we ready? Yes. Yes. Captain Ezra, let us make our way in. Are there any uh, like hand signals or anything we should know before we step foot in these woods? Uh, and he he briefly runs you over some very simple hand signals, and, and they're actually very similar to the ones that Leo used. Um, but he doesn't seem too concerned about being all that stealthy. It's more about picking up the trail and tracking this creature and making sure that uh, you take it down before it takes you down. Um, he points at two of the uh, weird hunters, and he tells them to stay put with the horses and the uh, the sled. And he basically tells them, if you guys are gone for a certain period of time, to return back to the lodge without you, because it is a bad sign that you most likely will not return. He points to two of uh, the other uh, the other two weird hunters that are not <laughs> staying there. Uh, he says, Frederick, Mercer, you're coming with us. And they both nod uh, uh, quickly. Uh, Frederick, uh, who looks to be young, uh, maybe half of the age of you guys, uh, he wields a sword, much like Kristoff, and has leathers that are uh, uh, slightly worn, but not nearly as worn as uh, Captain Ezra. And Mercer is someone who is wearing leathers, but also has kind of a... Uh, uh, a robish nature to the leathers and is wearing a uh, chain around their neck that has the symbol of the All Mother on it. Uh, this person appears to be some sort of uh, a religious person. Uh, maybe not so much of a fighter, uh, but, but obviously has their purpose amongst this team. And uh, with that command, uh, Captain Ezra begins to walk into the woods uh, with Frederick and Mercer behind and all three of you closely behind as well. As you begin to walk through, you might ready your weapons, you might be on guard. Uh, the captain is stopping every 10 or 15 minutes, kneeling down, touching the soil, touching the grass, uh, the, the, the foliage, uh, looking at broken branches, and uh, making hand signals and telling you to go this way. Every once in a while, he'll stop and he'll confer with Frederick and Mercer, and they'll talk amongst themselves, and there will be a, a pause as they think, and they nod, and then they continue. Uh, it's at this point that I need you all to make a resolution roll regarding stealth. Oh, hey. stealth? Yes. <clears throat> I'm a ware of that. So that is going to be, yes, exactly. That is a ware, uh, the way a ware. And if you are disciplined in. Nope, just straight stealth. So no discipline. So you will roll a 1d10 and you will add your awareness and your stealth. Seven. Six. Twelve. Okay. I'm looking for uh, rocks every time we stop, and so I might make a little noise, causing a few of them to tumble or something along those lines as I find a, a smoother, sharp rock for my sling. As you guys are, are traipsing through the woods here, uh, it is 
you know, you you might occasionally step on a branch, right? <clears throat> Very similar to the time that you were with Leo, and but you're not, you don't even notice, but Frederick occasionally shoots you like a like a worried glance. Um, Shoots you a worried glance as he hears a snap, and, and you're following the hand signs. There's a stop, and there's a go, and there's a stop, and you're doing your best to to not uh, make noise. Um, and it's not long before you enter a clearing. It's very, it's been, it's been very obvious that Captain Ezra, Frederick, and Mercer have been on on a trail. They seem to have picked up a trail. They're on it. They're they're. It opens up into a clearing. And again, he, he makes another stop. He looks around and he, he stands up and he quietly leans in and says, I believe we're getting close. What makes you say that, Captain? And the tracks, they're getting deeper. There's more signs that this creature is afoot. Should we try to surround or approach directly? Surrounding would be a good idea, but something is off. And I need you all to make uh, perception checks, which is going to be awareness plus your perception. Oh, crit, confirming the crit. Oh! Not, did not confirm. Okay, so what's your total? Perception, uh, 11 for me. 11 for Kristoff? 15, 15 for Jasper. Seven, I'm just looking at Ezra. It is Jasper who first hears it. And in that same moment, Captain Ezra also seems to hear it. And before you can even react, he quickly spins on his heels and says, The beast is here! Ready yourself! And out of the woods, very close by, is a large crashing sound. It goes from almost silent to this m absolutely monstrous beast crashing through the woods. This is the largest creature that you have ever laid eyes on. It very much looks like a bear, but it is rotting, <gasps> fleshy. Uh, it has these bulbous, uh, almost tumors that, that seem to uh, be all over its body. The, the flesh, the coloration is not Right, and I'm going to need you all to roll for initiative. Hey. I draw us a small map. By biggest creature, you mean like biggest animal? Was it bigger than the four dweller? I was no, gonna say, okay. It is, it is by far yeah. the largest, like, wild one. Yes, got it, got it. The wild, the biggest sure. beast. Holy shit, that's a big old bear! So if you could. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Mm. That's very good. That's alright. That's pretty good. Okay. To battle, men. To battleman? Yeah. Um, this is that's that's you. Is I. This is that you? That's no, that's Balto. that's Balto. This that's is Balto. Chris, uh, I'd be. No, Christoph is the knight. Where I'd be is, here. Where, oh, where's the knight? The oh, she's she's over there, maybe. Oh. Swap that out. Okay. Yeah. The sword. Yeah, the that's her. So I'm, you guys can place yourselves where step. you would be. You would be a little bit behind. Oh, the sword broke. Um, and uh, my staff broke. Um, <laughs> that's fine. One is going to be the that's uh, that's weird bear. Uh, number two is going to be Captain Ezra. Uh, number three is going to be that puts Frederick. Me, that puts me right here. And number four is going to be Mercer. Can you grab the other mini? I just want to see. Yeah, please. Feel free to do what you, do what you like. All right. You're good. I think this could work pretty well. Uh, be sure I do two, here we go. three, and four. I mean, we get to place oh. ourselves wherever we want. Yes, so that's correct. You okay. do you. Uh, two, three, four. Okay. So we're going to start with the top of the round. We're going to do order of action. It's going to be 1d10 plus your speed. I'd be, I'd be, I would have been up. You I mean, might have been up farther. I mean. I would have been further in the back. I was right next to the captain chatting. Um, oh, we're running, we're rolling for a thing. How do we roll for the thing? Uh, so you roll, it's 1d10 plus your speed to determine order of action. I'm pretty sure I got a seven, but I just need to find my speed again. Hold on. Oh, good. I'm going to confirm the critical fail. Seven. Yeah. I'm going to confirm the critical fail. Nope. Um, I feel all this should be on the front of the game. Also, not long for the life. <laughs> I agree. I agree. 
The same thing with... Uh, one uh, moment. With Remember us. your numbers for me for one second. So that's why it is Okay. Um, you got a 16, Kristoff? 16. Okay. Uh, what else did you guys get? Jasper got a 7. Oh. Balto got a 4. Oh, got a 4. Uh, Balto got, got a 4. Ah! There he goes. The whole world is out the door. Yeah. Fitzy's got a gun. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> All right. This sucks. And then again, as we do in reverse order, you will determine your fighting Balto stance for the round. Balto. Determine your stance. Standard. D offensive. Offensive. Uh, number four is going to take defensive. Jasper. Offensive for Jasper. Offensive. Uh, number three is going to take offensive. Number two is going to take offensive. Uh, number one is going to take offensive. Kristoff? Uh, which one's the bear? The, number one. one. Oh, number one. So uh, their numbers should all correspond. Defense. Uh, number two is um, defense. Number two is uh, Ezra. Number three is Frederick. And number four is Merchant. Perfect. That sounds right. Awesome. Uh, so it is Kristoff's turn first. You are taking a, you said a defensive stance or offensive stance? Yeah. Defensive stance. That's what I thought. Uh, okay. So you get to take your turn first. You uh, can either approach, you have movement, and you have an action. Uh, I'll just scream, watch yourselves, stay back, and I'm going to run up my three speed, and with oh, my yeah, nice. unpredictable feature, um, I want to basically bash him with my shield to kind of like stun him as he's lunging for us, uh, and that will give me plus one on rolls Hey, that's him. not fair. Awesome. Uh, and then I will come in with a sword hey, stab Bolto. into his haunch. That's fine. Okay. Come. Nice. Is it just the roll plus my attack Yeah, so for your attack is going to be your combativeness plus your domain or discipline, which yep. for you will be the discipline and swords. So, so combativeness 14. plus swords uh, plus your attitude modifier, which is defense, so you're going to minus two for okay. the attack, and then whatever you roll on your 1d10. So my roll in total is going to be 20, but the damage roll is going to be 23. Um, so your roll is 20, 20 with hit. the minus two. Yes. Wow. Or, sorry, uh, yes, correct. Okay. Yep. Yep. Uh, so a 20 is going to hit, and uh, the damage you said is what, 23 total? Uh, 23 is my full damage roll. Okay. Uh, so you, uh, you run up, and you are ready. Uh, again, it is, the, the brigands are far from your mind at this point. You are looking at this absolutely terrifying creature. And, uh, but you don't let that deter you. As you move forward, you raise your shield, you, you bash it uh, in the face, and it almost doesn't seem to be expecting this, as you drive your sword deep into its uh, haunch, dealing a lot of damage. Um, but it still seems to be okay. It roars in pain. Ha! Okay. Uh, it is the bear's turn. Um, it sees you, Kristoff. Uh, as you have approached it. And it's almost... It, it notices that you're there and it's angry. But it sees these, these weird hunters. And it seems to have a recognition in its eyes that these men and women have been hunting it for a long time. And it pushes past you and almost knocks you out of the way. Oh, no. As it moves forward and charges... I've got a beef with you, motherfuckers. Directly to... Uh, between... Uh, Captain Ezra and Frederick, and it is going to make an attack on Frederick. Uh, um, this this weird bear, uh, it it charges, and immediately it it almost jumps forward to maul the young Frederick, and it tears deep into this young man's oh, armor. Fuck. The, the leather almost seems to melt uh, at the absolute brutality of the slashing claw attack. And uh, you hear Frederick scream as blood gushes from his chest. Um, and the bear is going to then, because it landed uh, an attack, use its special bite maneuver to deal an additional damage on top of it. Um, now he's toast. Oh, he's so fucking dead. One moment. I'm doing a lot of math. I apologize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Frederick falls to the ground and he goes from looking scared uh, but healthy to being an absolute bloody mess oh. and uh, gasping for air as the blood begins to uh, run from his mouth as after the the bear has landed this horrific maul attack, it clenches down with its jaws and Frederick is not looking good. He is he is looking very, very, very bad. Is three? Three. Yep. Uh, yeah. Three's big Fred. Okay. Uh, number two is uh, Ezra, as he turns and watches this creature, and he says, "Frederick, no! Remember your training, no!" And uh, he he attacks the weird bear and attempts to drive his sword deep into this creature's hide. Oh, he's gonna get like a special bear attack. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, I've been hunting you my whole life. I know just how to kill you. <laughs> 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 he does a good amount of damage, uh, and and the bear seems to uh, yell in pain, but it is fully focused on trying to rip Frederick to, to shreds. Uh, it is Frederick's turn, and he uh, is going to attempt to stand up and shake this bear off of him. Uh, he is unable to, as he continues to scream, and the blood is just pouring from his mouth. Run! It is very clear Run! that he is, he is stuck in its jaws. Uh, and things are good. Jasper, you are up. Uh, I will look. Am I uh, close enough? I'm sorry, what's the range on Inspire? Um, it's technically 30 feet. Uh, so, each one is like six. Oh, gosh. So you would have, to, get closer. You'd have to move kind oh, of no. like around and behind. Yeah. Uh, no. Each square is six feet, technically. Six feet. Okay. So yeah. how, Richie, how far do I need to go? That would be five squares for 30. Yeah. Uh, so one, two, three, four. So you have to get here. Okay, I'm going there. And you oh, can. Oh, oh, yeah! Okay. I love that. Yeah, you can yeah. move. Yep. And and not to inspire, but leadership, correct? What? Not leadership. Yeah, leadership. yeah, yeah. Okay. Thanks, Pythagoras. Uh, I will uh, say, uh, no, no, be patient. Wait until it lunges and then thrust. Uh, and I will basically um, get it angry. And uh, that will be a strategy on anyone that I conspire, prioritizing my two friends, then this guy, then this guy. He's already fucked. And actually, no, I'll give it to him first. Yeah, you you are able to give this command of leadership to to everyone. I need you to make a leadership roll. Um, it's gonna, gonna use your strategy. It's gonna use your strategy. Pretty good. Um, Pretty good. It's so under conviction. Give it, do we give so, it a roll on the roll, so or does that three? One d ten plus add your three. conviction. Three, hundred percent. Yep. Okay, so ten. Plus uh, and your and plus your strategy. Okay. Ten plus oh gosh oh gosh oh gosh. Uh, ten uh, plus that'll be a hot twenty. Oh Wait. well, okay, yeah. that's that's very good. Wait, hold on, hold on. Actually, no, no, no hold on. It's whatever you roll. Uh, twenty. Yeah. Whatever this you roll four, plus 10, your domain plus and plus your discipline. Damn. Discipline this way. Okay. Twenty. Um, you uh, you and step then I have up. plus one because I'm a strategist. I'm a leader. Yeah, I'm a leader. You step up and you deliver this command uh, to your party, and you find that it's exceptionally difficult, uh, more so than usual, to deliver this command in the absolute mayhem that has broken out in the mere moments that this beast has leapt from the the edge of the wood uh, into the clearing and started mauling uh, one of the the weird hunters. Um, and so, what I'll say is, with that roll. You would normally get a plus two, but because of your uh, and and the d difficulty of the of the check, you'll get an additional plus one, and you're going to give your team plus three for the okay. next two rounds. Okay. Uh, awesome. Uh, it is number four's turn. Uh, this this more timid looking uh, weird hunter, uh, who is wearing the 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 emblem of the of the All Mother, uh, they they take a step back actually away from the, the, the mayhem that is happening, closer to the edge of the clearing, and they uh, they grip their the symbol that's hanging around their neck, and they begin to whisper uh, a prayer. And it's in this moment that a bit of golden light begins to seep through their finger, uh, oh. the fingers that are locked around this amulet. And uh, as the light grows, they, they kind of pull their hands away, and you see that the, this orb of light is growing and the emblem is floating between their hands in this, this, the middle uh, of this, this orb. Um, 
they seem to be pouring some sort of, of magical uh, mana or something into this Ooh. prayer, this mana, and it's very clear that they're casting a spell. What? Uh, you, 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 you have seen magic maybe magic. once or twice in your life, but it's very clear that this is what this is. And as uh, this this uh, young Mercer begins to pour the magic and the, and the incantations into this uh, amulet, you can sell, tell that they're almost overcharging it in, in some way. It seems to be uh, like they're hastily trying to cast the spell more so than they normally would. And this golden light then bathes down upon Frederick that is uh, in, in the jaws of this creature. Oh, man. And uh, Mercer is going to make a spell. Wow. I'm going to yeah. crit confirm this. What? Hopefully it confirms. Okay, no good, no good. Damn. Um, but it's very clear that the golden light begins to close up some of the wounds on... Uh, young Mer uh, young Frederick, uh, as Mercer is doing everything in his power to try to save his companion. Balta, you're up. This magic's crazy, yo. Magic. Uh, I see this, and uh, I have to push the awe that I have in my mind out of the way to confront the fact that we're still fighting this monstrous bear. I'm going to back up. Can I get out of, or like, into the like into the clearing here, or uh, if, am I? If you want, it's too to, dense to. If you were trying to take like a defensive stance, you absolutely might be able to hide behind one of the trees on the edge of this clearing. Uh, but you had choose it chose offense, offense right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yes, it, for, you can absolutely move towards the edge. I'll of just, this I'll clearing. just come, I'll just yeah. come here. That's fine. Yeah. And uh, 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 having picked up a few of the stones on the journey into the forest here, I will uh, put one into my sling, yep. and I'm just going to, I'm going to aim for its eye. I'm going to knowingly try to hit the head area, but like as much as it's thrashing around, I want to do some serious damage, and I will endeavor to hit it with my. Simple sling. Okay. Roll to attack. So oh! Crit. Confirm. Wow, confirm. 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 Okay. confirm. Come on, confirm. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Ten. Ah, oh, oh. almost. Uh, so it'll be your ten plus your uh, combativeness and then your domain or discipline that you use for fighting. And then plus... Uh, so it's fifteen to hit and it's sixteen total for the uh, damage math. Um, fifteen to hit. Did you add the two for your offensive stance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or did you Ten. add three for the leadership oh, yeah, as well? Oh, I did not add three for the leadership. So that's a total of so 19 it, with the damage? It should have been 19 for the damage. Perfect. Exactly right. Thank you. You uh, you take a step back as you are watching the absolute carnage unfold. The spell, this this magic is now in the air as well that you see. But you uh, steady yourself and you aim and you loose a rock. And you are able to make a connection uh, to the... Uh, in, in this, this creature's head, it, it it doesn't quite hit him in the eye, but it, it like hits him in the face. The temple face, or general sure. face area. And, it, and the, uh -huh. the creature, even though it has Frederick in its jaws, uh, uh, jerks and, and moves, and Frederick uh, cries out in pain. I look closely and hope to see some blood start to at least come down over its eye. Um, but uh, that is the conclusion of my turn. Um, uh, get the way if you can! And that'll be my turn. Um, okay, then we need to re-roll for the order. Top of the round. Uh, let me real quick roll mine before you shot yours out. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So close. Gosh, why is every battle so tense? Mirror plus three. Oh, thank oh. you. Yes, you guys have plus. Oh, and the bear needs to be do it at disadvantage. Thank you. Oh. Three plus three plus three. Is a nine. Sorry, not just they need to re-roll it. Okay, thank you. The yes, lowest. they need to re-roll it <laughs> and take the lowest. <laughs> not a disadvantage. No. It's take the lowest style. Uh, There's no other good word. You go to the, you go to the thesaurus and you look at disadvantage okay. or advantage. Uh, or penalty. Chris, what'd you get? Yeah. Uh, shit. Uh, three plus nine is twelve. Thirty, forty, fifteen. Fifteen total. Okay, fifteen is. Good, and then we've got... 17 for Jasper. Whoa, 17 I for rolled Jasper. I rolled a 10. Nice, nice, nice. Nine. Nine. Right. Balto got a nine. And nine. <laughs> we'll all oh, no. Look out, it's Freddy Five there. <laughs> <laughs> Balto, what'd you get? Jasper, you've had too much wine. <laughs> Balto. What did you get Balto. again? Balto. You said a nine? Nine. 
There we go. Both All right, so not bad. Um, okay, uh, in reverse order, uh, the uh, Weird Hunter Captain will take offensive. Uh, uh, Mercer will take four uh, defensive. Uh, Balto. Offensive. Offensive. Uh, <laughs> he's going to attempt to take. Frederick is going to attempt to take defensive. Uh, even though he's in the jaws of the sword. Please, no! <laughs> <laughs> the bear takes offensive. Uh, Crystal? Offensive. Offensive. Jasper? Offensive. Okay, Jasper, you're up first. Offensive. Uh, I am going to step as far away. That's what? One, two? <laughs> yeah. Right? I can yep. just do two? Yep, yep, yep. I'm just walking back as I've had my loaded crossbow ready. And I'm going to wait until, you know, he's calling out, until it gets angry from the uh, from this. And as soon as it kind of tries to lunge, I'll uh, <clears throat> shoot my uh, the coral from my crossbow. <coughs> sure. <clears throat> so combativeness plus your domain or discipline. And I'm, plus your plus two, you have your plus three. five. So I'm going to use one of my hunters, my survival points. Okay, your reroll. Seven, I will take that. Nice. Uh, so seven plus... Um, Six is what is that? Uh, that's thirteen. Oh wait, plus oh, hold on, sorry. Hold on, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. So the, so it's offensive. So it is. Hold on. So the best way to do it is to do your combativeness plus your domain. Do that first. Uh, then add your ten, and then add five because you get plus two from the offensive and plus three from the leadership. So then uh, that is nineteen. Nice nineteen. Because this th you, this includes my crossbow damage, right? The nine from offensive. No, it doesn't. Matter. Oh, it doesn't. Oh, so twenty one. First is to hit. Twenty one. Yep. Yeah. 21. But then add the damage for the damage. Yeah. Twenty one. Which is a really cool system. Yeah. Yeah. I like the math of that. So twenty one as I fire my coral, attempting as it's trying to get you know if it's yeah. angry from that thing. Yeah, you do. To my you own do an absolutely huge strategy. attack, uh, which is great. Um, you sink, uh, this crossbow bolt sinks deep into the, the, the right. ribs of this creature. Um, and it, it, it's howling in pain, but again, it is, is it hasn't let go. It's like lockjawed on horror. Uh, uh, Frederick. Christoph, you're up. Uh, I am going to rush up to it. Uh, and I'll, I'll get shoulder to shoulder here with, um... Ezra. Oh, Ezra. Um... Uh, and I'll just scream out, Can you fucking save him?! And I'm going oh. to attack. Whoops! Sorry, can you help me out? Come on. I don't know how these keep falling off. You're fine. Should you I have 18, so. <laughs> uh, eight plus 16 plus three, so 16, uh, 24, 25, 26, 27 to hit. Wow! And 30 for damage. Unbelievable! Well done. Uh, you deal an absolutely massive blow to this creature, and it is it's bleeding, and it it is angry. Uh, you just did an unbelievable amount of damage. I uh, put my sword against its side, and as I'm moving around next to Ezra, I just slash it the whole way across. Oh, you, you've see? definitely, you've definitely noticed though that this creature seems to be more resilient than anything else you've ever fought. Mm -hmm. You're not sure if it is the weirdness that has uh, toughened its hide. Almost, uh, it, it doesn't seem to be cutting like you would expect. Uh, but you do know that you have dealt, and you have struck true. You've dealt, dealt an unbelievable amount of damage to this thing. Love it. So it's definitely bloodied. We're all going to be <laughs> yeah. fine. No uh, it good. is number one's turn. Uh, it is going to continue <coughs> to make an attack on Frederick. I don't know. This guy's a great tank. Uh, crit <laughs> confirmed does not miss. Uh, but it is uh, with an unfortunate, sickening, ripping and snapping that... Uh, you realize that this weird bear is finally letting go because Frederick is, has, been, has been killed. Uh, you're not sure if it is his spine and then the muscles tearing as he's been ripped in two. Uh, and then because the bear has a feature, uh, Frederick has killed someone, it gets to make another attack. You were such a nice bike ride. So he's dead. Toast. Yeah, he's absolutely dead. And uh, you can see the... Uh, a bit of sadness in, in, in Captain Ezra's eyes, and uh, you almost you hear uh, Mercer uh, uh, gasp uh, as this happens, and the bear turns to attack uh, Weird Hunter Ezra. Mm. Oh wow! Okay. Mm. Mm. Mm, I love beans. You do? No. Oh really? no, I do. You like beans? I, I do like beans. Frederick, I got killed by 
a bear. They'll call him Freddy Five Bear. <laughs> Why five? It's very funny. Uh, no, uh, me had five fingers. Five fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Where did this tiger back. guy get here? And then, <laughs> well, he just had the five fingers across the two hands. <laughs> <laughs> you kill me. Uh, uh, that's, okay. that's a game theory. <laughs> um, the 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 weird bear uh, having uh, uh. ripped poor Frederick in two. Uh, and and his entrails are, are spilled oh, on the forest floor. Guy. It immediately, in a, in a rage, whips around and slashes uh, Captain Ezra uh, across the chest. Uh, his armor seems to be holding up a bit better than uh, Frederick's. He's a bit more uh, quick on his feet, yeah, even given his advanced age. It's clear that his experience is shining through, uh, but he yells out as, as he's clearly hit and uh, appears to be a bit wounded. Um, the, at the end of this weird bear's turn, uh, you see that its flesh uh, begins to uh, kind of stitch up a little bit. <gasps> it, it clearly has some sort of regenerative properties as well. No. Oh, great. You're not allowed to do that. Uh, you have fiery attacks? <laughs> this is where we all die. I'm sorry? Does anyone have fiery uh, attacks? Yeah, oh, no! That's, that's not how that good, works. That's a good try. Uh, yeah, he's gone. He's out of here. Balto, you're up. Oh, no. I will move in this direction like so to continue to circle beast and then I will attack again with another sharp rock. Uh, yeah, the creature is big enough that you're able to shoot around Kristoff. If you don't want to get away from us. I'm, I'm trying to strafe. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm counter-striking. Yeah, I just meant that like because you are behind both of them, I still think you, you have line of sight. What is your total attack? It's your uh, combativeness plus your domain. Uh, plus your, your I, I have plus five, five to attack. Yep. I rolled a seven. And plus I have plus three, three to leadership. Yep. So I have fifteen to hit, and that makes oh. my damage sixteen. Fifteen to hit? Yeah. Okay, that still hits. Uh, and you said plus two, so for a total of seventeen. Okay. 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 Yeah, you uh, you loose another rock, and this creature is large. It's it's actually it's it's hard for you to miss. It, it would be. You'd be hard pressed to miss, even in this this absolutely hectic scenario. Sometimes I kill small animals like puppies. Um, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> we got a secret <laughs> This is nightmarish. Oh no! In old country, <laughs> um, my children need food. Uh, the 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 glow from Mercer's amulet continues as he's continuing to chant. Uh, when he saw Frederick. Uh, absolutely ripped in two, he falters for a moment and the light kind of diminishes and the, 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 the small uh, orb of light that is around the floating amulet falters for a moment, but he, he steals himself and he continues to chant. Uh, oh, and in shit. this moment, you hear Ezra uh, yell out as, as he's been struck by the bear, Mercer, quickly! The spirit is willing, but the flesh needs binding. And, uh, he, uh, uh, he, he, By the old mother. You, you see a uh, uh, knowing in Mercer's eyes as he nods and continues to chant, and this golden light, uh, this bright light, uh, uh, engulfs uh, uh, Ezra as he is, he is healed, uh, attempting to heal him. Oh! Uh, um, I thought he was going to Dragon Ball Z this business. This is a healing spell? Yes, yes. He's Fantastic. trying to keep his... Uh, oh, it is, it is, it is very clear that this Mercer's role is to... Uh, Holy to shit. To be some sort of a healer, uh, you know, <laughs> to keep his, his, his fellow hunters alive. Uh, with the role here, uh, it appears to work. You see uh, the wounds that Ezra has just taken uh, close up a little, and it staunches a little bit of the bleeding that, that is staining his... his uh, his leathers. Uh, and then it is uh, Ezra's turn, and he's going to make an attack. Mercer, you son of a bitch. Oh, crit confirm. I'm rolling a lot of tens over Yeah, here. come on, crit confirm it. Nope, I got I went from a 10 to a 1. Oh. Uh, but it's still a good hit, and uh, uh, Captain Ezra uh, uh, steals from you. this 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 healing, uh, drives his sword deep into the uh, side of this bear. Yeah, I am not doing all right. Luck-wise. Uh, the bear is in this moment um, bleeding. You you see that it, it no longer looks good or okay. It's it's starting to look kind of uh, rough. But in this moment, uh, as as Ezra delivers this this blow, 
you can tell that the bear starts to breathe heavier and faster, and it gets kind of a crazed look in its eye as it, it appears to uh, be in a, in, a, in a bloodthirsty frenzied state. It, it, all of this fighting, the, the fresh blood that is in the air, its blood, Frederick's blood, uh, seems to enrage this creature. And uh, it is the top of the round, and we're going to roll again for uh, initiative order. Okay. The bear needs to roll it, uh, roll twice. Yep. Oh, wow. Uh, no more plus threes? Yep, then we got oh, another yeah. round. Okay. With three rounds, right? Or is it two rounds? This is the top of thir the third round. It lasts three rounds, yes. isn't it? Uh, two. Two rounds. So this Leadership, is not, we don't have leadership so we have anymore. It. We've had it for no, one. No, we've only had it for one round. Yeah. You're it right. It ends on the end of Right, because we didn't have it the first round, then we have it the second right. round. Yeah. You'll It'll have it end at the end of this round. Yeah. Because you get essentially leadership, fire, fire. Leadership, yep. fire, fire, right? Um, I got did really well again. I rolled a... Uh, nine plus a four, 13, 14. Yeah. Uh, okay, let me roll for the other two hunters. Oh, wait. Yeah, 14. 14, 14. What did you get, Jasper? Uh, wait, oh shoot. I got a 19. 19? Uh, hold on. 12 plus four. 16. 16. I'm sorry. I'm bad at math. 16. Both of what did you get? Eight. Oh boy. Oh. I, I ate this. Kristoff. Jasper. <clears throat> okay, not too bad. All right. Uh, even though the bear appears to be frenzied and breathing more heavily, uh, you still feel that you have the jump on it. Uh, Christoph, you're up. Um, uh, uh, and offensive, stance. defensive. Oh, apologies. Uh, Balto, stance. Uh, offensive. Offensive stance. Uh, the bear is taking an offensive stance. Uh, Ezra is taking an offensive stance. Mercer is taking a defensive stance. Jasper. Offensive. Christoph. Offensive. Okay. Um, awesome. Christoph, what is you, what are you doing? Uh, that's a nasty wound! You better patch yourself up! And I'm going to, uh, I say that to uh, Ezra as we fight side by side. Yep. Um, and I'm going to attack. No, no, use, use, your, survival use your survival. Point. Yeah, we gotta yeah. kill this guy, Dad. Yeah. Now's the time to use survival. Use another uh, survival. I'm gonna use. One, can I use two? On the same roll. roll? Uh, it doesn't say that you can't. Yeah. Okay, I'm, this is my last Thank one. You, I will allow it. Thank you, I Chad. use one with Bridget. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> six plus, plus sixteen plus three. So six, sixteen. Uh, Jesus. Sixteen plus six is twenty-two. <laughs> Uh, 23, 24, 25 to hit, and 28 for damage. Awesome. Uh, again, you deal an absolutely massive blow. Uh, the, the only advantage to, to poor Frederick's loss is that it has given you these openings to, to really oh, yeah. do what you need to do to hopefully drive this home. Uh, and you deliver another massive blow. Awesome. Oh, no. Jasper, Was you're it up. Frederick or Red Shirt? <laughs> I'll take that. Uh, <clears throat> 23. Oh, wow. Thunk. Keep going, Christoph. It's almost dead. Thunk. I guess I'm away, my lord. I guess I'm uh, you drive I'm another crossbow bolt deep into its it, its, its ribs. It, the you are uh, you're a good shot. You've done this many times, and you actually land this crossbow bolt very close to the other crossbow bolt. It's almost like in your mind's eye, you're back on Briarbrook, loosing arrows into a still tree, uh, as you do a good amount of damage. Yeah, and this would have been where I would have learned to use a, a crossbow. Would have been in the hunting with my lord father, and so this kind of takes me back. You keep saying coral. Is that crossbow bolt? Bolt cross? is also a coral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. bolt. Oh. A bolt, a, a coral. coral. Yeah, I just right. think of the sun from The Walking Dead when I hear the oh. word coral. Uh, it's at this a moment bolt. that you realize that the uh, the magics that Mercer has been channeling in this amulet begin to dim, and he's breathing heavily, and he's sweating. It seems to be taking a lot out of him. Uh, and he takes a moment to uh, redouble his efforts uh, as he really focuses on, on this amulet to see if he can continue to uh, heal his, his weird hunter captain. I uh -oh. By the uh -oh. Oh no. By the owl mother, we're fucked. That is a critical failure. Oh! No fucking way. 
he begins to first time uh, double once. Uh, oh he, he he you you see that he's breathing his labor. He's focused on this magic, and he's 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 still chanting to himself. But you can almost hear the chanting in between these words that come on, come on, you're gonna, all right, we gotta get, I can do it. Just a little bit more, and the light is is flickering. It's it's growing and shrinking. It's almost out of his control. And there's a flash as Mercer is knocked backwards, and he lands on the ground, and he almost looks stunned, <gasps> as if he has lost Miscast. control of uh, what he was trying oh. to do with this channeling. And he does. He miscasts with a critical failure. Oh. The, the, he, he attempted to put too much. Uh, 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 energy into this magic and lost control of it. He appears to be stunned, and he is uh, going to be stunned for uh, at least a round. He cracks his head on the tree, probably. Yeah, he, he lands on the ground, and, and, and he's not unconscious, but he looks dazed, and, and almost like he's out of it and a little bit shell-shocked. And, uh, Captain Ezra, that? I don't care for it, frankly, if you ask me. Mm. Uh. With this attack uh, and the, the, the miscast of this magic, uh, you can tell that the, the, the witch, uh, uh, the weird hunter captain is distracted in this moment. And he, he looks over his shoulder and yells, Mercer, get yourself together! And as he makes a swing with his sword, he misses. Uh, he, is, he is clearly distracted by the miscast of this magic and, and all hell is breaking loose and his attack uh, is, is no good. And it is the bear's turn. Kristoff, Chris, I think you might be in trouble. <laughs> no. <laughs> he took the words out of my mouth. The uh, the bear uh, is is going to turn and attack Kristoff. Oh! <laughs> I can just, I can just picture it so clearly. I was just I'm I'm watching. From it over seems here. to recognize you as a threat uh, now yeah, that yeah, Frederick yeah. is has been has <clears throat> been dispatched. I've made an enormous mistake, everyone. Yeah, I don't know why you went offensive. It's gonna be... It gives me four more damage. But you lose, you take more damage. You take a lot more damage. Yeah. Considerably more damage. more damage. You take six more damage. That's um, a lot. What is your defense? But there's a, there's a weird eight. bear. It's a weird bear well, right Oh, your total defense is eight? Uh. Hold on, that should be right. No. That's right. You were, oh, yeah, it's eight. I yeah. had your defense as like 14 or something. This thing is With, massive. When I'm using defensive stance, which I was going to use every round, but I just got. No, that's okay. Greedy. You got excited. That's all right. You went, so, on, you went offensive. Didn't oh, you? I'm sorry. You're right. So, because it, it's 11 minus. Normally it's 11 minus yeah. three, it would be eight. I'm going to take it in the face. It's like you're fighting in the Oscar uh, Meyer yeah. Wiener truck. You can't. You can't deal with that. <laughs> Everyone knows. Stop that. saying all the shit. <laughs> um. Did you know it? Third five nights at Freddy's. You. This. The, you. You were feeling either overconfident or maybe you were feeling as if you were going to end this quickly. That's right. But you weren't prepared for how quickly this bear was able to. Uh, this weird bear was able to move <clears throat> and and strike. And uh, he is going to. He's do... faced. <laughs> Uh, it's going to be 12 points of damage. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. You, you, your shield wasn't readied. You are taken by surprise. And the actual power of this beast is shocking. As it attempts to maul you. That's bad. So my armor is 2, so that's 10 points total. Yep. <sighs> Holy shit. <laughs> oh, fuck! Yeah, it turns to me. <laughs> uh, so, by my calculation, what is your uh, what is your current uh, status looking like? My current status, I've filled all ten boxes of okay and, and good. So you're so you're bad. bad. So to, it, I don't have to have one X and bad to be bad, right? No, you are just you, okay, once you are the in final bad. box of okay is ticked, you are. I am in I am in the bad condition. Uh oh. You, you unfortunately see a large amount of blood spill oh. out from. Where your friend Kristoff is, you're not entirely sure if it's Kristoff's uh, blood or Ezra's blood, but or perhaps even blood that was on the where the the weird bear from Frederick. I uh, four damage if I had taken defense of. Uh, but but things are uh, uh, looking uh, violent. Uh, well, shucks. Balto, you're up. Are you okay? Oh, no. <laughs> I don't have anything. Look at I, can't, me. I can't possibly do anything. All um, I can do is attack this bear. I can't go can up and... Me. No, I can't. 
<laughs> no, it, hold, it, hold, it, hold still. No, in this, in this scenario, it would be extremely difficult to administer any kind of healing without yeah. some sort of a potion yeah. or magic. Or, or magic. Yeah, it's fucking. I look at Mercer. He's like crackling shit? on the ground. All I can do is oh, no. continue to throw stones. You, you had a charm that would protect against mental resistance. Mental resistance. I will confirm. crit, and oh. I would like to confirm, confirm. the crit. Yeah. For an attack? Yeah. Okay. Come on, come on, come on. This is ah, Okay, all right. Damn. That's still a 10. I know, but I'll take the 10 plus the 3 is 13 <laughs> really plus the 5 is 18 of the maximum damage hits, and then I'll do one plus 1 for sling for 19. Okay, I, I think I got all that. <laughs> uh, yeah, big hit. Oh, big hit, big hit, big hit. Okay, well done, well done. Thanks. Awesome. Uh, top of the round, we're gonna roll for order again. Yeah. Uh, the bear will roll twice. Now we it don't falls off. Ship. Leadership falls off. Okay, so now six for Balto. Balto, Balto tired. <laughs> Are you all right? <laughs> Everything good over there? I've been circling for what feels like 30 minutes. <laughs> it's been three seconds. Uh, uh, what did you guys get? Nine. Eighteen. Woo, eighteen. Nine. Balto? Six. Okay. Sheesh. Crystal's fast, man. Uh, He's a scrappy guy. Yeah, I got nine speed. You can really feel the difference between a fighter and normal. Yep. You yeah. know, it's yep. really cool. It's really cool. I take defensive stance. <laughs> I'm just going to say it right now. I'm taking defensive uh, stance. I'm going to go buy eternity. a bear! You need to get behind the... You need to stab him and get behind fucking... So, uh, one of the things to, to remember as well, uh, and it, it hasn't come up yet because you were before the bear, but uh, you're, you're just, you're very, very fast. But in an instance where if the bear had been before you and it attacked, you could have attempted to parry by foregoing your, your action. It just hasn't come up yet. Oh. Your turns are continuous, right? Yeah. But That's if you cool. are waiting for your turn and you are attacked, you can choose to forego your future action when your turn comes up to parry in that moment I and attempt that. a better defense. Just, you know, for everybody's knowledge. Um, awesome. Kristoff, you're up. You're up first. This bear is looking rough. So we're gonna, does everyone else need to do the... Oh, we have to do Oh, I keep forgetting. <coughs> Thank you so much for helping me remember. Balto, uh, what are you doing? Offensive? Uh, offensive. Jasper? Offensive. Uh, the bear is offensive. Oh, actually, I'm defensive. Okay, Jasper's defensive. defense. Bear's offensive. Uh, Mercer is, uh, stunned, so he's gonna take standard by default. Okay. Oh. Uh, yeah. and Ezra is also gonna take defensive. Defensive. Okay. Now, Kristoff, you're for sure. If you can feel the tides shift. Um, how is old um, Victor over here? Oh, I thought you were going to ask Honeyballs. Ezra. Uh, oh, you mean, honey you, mean, you mean Oliver Ezra, not Victor. Yes, not uh, Victor he, he is. He's breathing heavy. I mean, he took a massive hit, but he did also receive some healing from Mercer, so I would say that he looks okay. Uh, I'll just lean over and I'll say, go. Just get, get the fuck out of here. We can finish this. Uh, um, he, he looks at you just as a, as a, like think of it as a free object interaction and replies to you, Never! We, the, the, the weird hunters will never return without their mark. We can do this! Um, and I will try to like kind of continue to uh, aggro the bear if I can. And I'm going to try to use the, the parry action. You'll have to tell me what it does. Boy! But, um, bear. I'm going to oh. parry. You might not be able to take it until it attempts to attack. Yeah. No, I think I have to take it on my turn. Well, it, my understanding is is that you take it check. if your the turn hasn't can come be up made yet. Even if the character normally played next in the order of action. Yeah. So I think that you can take parry, or you can take it when you're attacked to forego your action. Is the way that I would interpret this. I Ooh, see. I can check the book real quick though, just to make sure. I like that. It's like I take the dodge action. Yeah. Kind of, yes, but it's it's yeah. better because it's better in a way. Yeah. But yes, uh, let me just double check real quick. Thanks for everybody bearing with me here. <clears throat> well, I, yeah, I announce my intention to parry. Yep. And then at the cost of my upcoming action, uh, they perform a contested action to roll against the attacker's roll. Oh. Yeah. So yep. basically, you give up your action by saying, "I intend to parry." Yep, and yeah, you're ready. You're inoffensive. Yep. And then if you cool. are attacked, uh, we, there will be a bit of a different roll. Uh, it's, yep. it's you get to roll for your defense instead of it just being a passive amount. Okay. Maybe okay. he'll just trip and his face will go okay. right under your foot. Uh, number two, it is Ezra's turn. Uh, he he tells you that they're not giving up, and he uh, attempts to attack this bear. 
Oh, good hit. Good hit. <clears throat> weird bears. Found some human men everywhere. Why are they such weird bears? Awesome. Okay. Uh, Ezra, Ezra looks at you. Uh, weird Captain Ezra looks at you and he, 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 he is con he's, he is stalwart in his belief of, of that, that, that you can, can, you can succeed here. And he continues to drive his sword deep into this bear's haunch as it, uh, screams in pain and fury and bloodlust. Uh, and it is Mercer's turn. I'm gonna roll to see if he is no longer stunned. He is still stunned. Uh, oh, no. But you can see that he's coming too, and and he's he doesn't look so shell shocked as he grief as he did. It's the bear's turn. And the bear is going to attack Kristoff. Oh. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the bear roll for attack here, and then I'll tell you what your roll is. Okay. So the way the parry works is it's basically a contested roll, okay. just like when we do other. Only what you're gonna do is you're gonna add, you're gonna do combativeness, plus close combat, plus your attitude modifier, plus a 1d10. So you, you will get the plus two, because you take a defensive stance as well. I'm going to... <clears throat> Let's use a survival point. Thank you, survival Chad. Survival point. We got it, we got it, it's gotta be high. And then I'm gonna buff it by three. Yep. And that's max. Okay, so 10 plus... Ten. Your attitude modifier, which is plus two, right? Yes. Then you get the three from, well, I guess technically the leadership war wears off, right, at the end of his Correct. turn. Correct, yep. So no it's plus two, just the plus two. Okay, so 10, 11, 12. Uh, then your close combat, 13, not your discipline, your, your domain. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Yep, and then your combativeness. Oh, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Perfect. Which is oh plus my uh, shield uh, bonus right? Uh, I don't know. So might not yeah, if the shield is go to the way that it works is the shield works while you're taking a defensive stance, correct? She, yes, it does. Yep, yep. And that adds uh, it adds a plus two. Oh nice. You're, you're twenty-four. Gonna leave this. Yeah. You got a twenty-four. The bear got a twenty-three. Oh, outrageous! Oh! So you are you you take this parry action. You know that things are dire, really but you know that if you can remain stalwart, if you can remain this living tower shield, you might provide an opening for your teammates to, to fend this off. This bear is very <sighs> intent on killing you, and it raise, you raise your shield and it, you catch its jaws as it clamps down <laughs> around your shield. And the shock of the force of the bear radiates up your arm and your oh, shoulder. Yeah, I feel it. Uh, you feel it, but you don't take any wounds. It's, you're gonna feel it tomorrow, you're gonna be sore. But you do not take any wounds. I'll oh, we'll just have to fight in the shade. Jasper, you're up. <laughs> uh, I oh, am gosh. going to. Uh, I'll, I'll. Oh, I need, shit! I'm so far away from you. But well, that's what I was saying. Is that he's just oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I fuck you. You don't get it. <laughs> uh, there's, I can't get to you, right? No. 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 There's no. I, I, I wasn't thinking about it. Yeah. Uh, I am going I'm to. Uh, that, be meta. Yeah, that's too meta. <laughs> Uh, provoke it! Provoke it and stab it when it lunges! Uh, as I'm going to then uh, call leadership. Yeah, make a leadership uh, roll. I'm going to use uh, another. And again, use strategy uh, if you have that as I a discipline. I am going to use another one of my survival points. Okay. That is, that's, oh, I have to use that. You have to use the second <gasps> roll. Yeah, that's the risk. Take one out, Rich. I'm using another survival <laughs> point. I should have taken the five. Nice. Nine. Uh, leadership, you say, plus strategy. Oy. Oh, oh you, it's nine, you need... plus nine is 18, plus six is a nice, what was that, 24. A nice 24 leadership, and I'm also a leader of a Oh, wow, okay, the yeah. advancement. That's very good. Um, you Funk. will, again, this is a dire situation. Uh, the, the, your, 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 your team hears you, and you do a good job strategically commanding them, uh, but given the DC, you will get plus three. Awesome. And that's including my That is including your plus one. Awesome. Uh, plus three, folks. Yeah. I love it. Uh, that was that's Jasper's my turn. turn. Balto, you're up. What? Yeah, you don't <laughs> get it. Balto doesn't get the bonus. Amazing. Rip. <laughs> you keep spiking. Jesus, why did I do Roll Come that on. again. Roll that again. Roll that again. Roll that one again. Yeah. We're due. We're due. We're due. 
Come on. Come on. Oh. Oh. It's rare. These are hard to get. It's These it's are hard to get. one percent. Um, but you do. You are going to hit. So what is your what is your total? Uh. I think it's like nineteen plus four. Right? No, 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 because I had the plus three there. I think it's oh. a sixteen. So okay. because I'm offensive stance, it's fifteen. Uh. Yeah, 15, 15 to hit, and then 16 uh, damage. to damage. Uh, okay. uh, you do a good amount of the damage. The bear. This thing is this thing is slowing down. Um, oh, and I'll get over to me too. Is also what I say. <laughs> get the fuck over here, Balto. Huddle together. Strike is one. You lose another rock. I'll get. I'll get, all, it, I'll get right behind. I'm worried about Kristoff. It connects. It connects well. <coughs> uh, it does. It, you, you do a, a little bit of damage, not as much as you were hoping. This bear is bleeding. Uh, it, its weird flesh uh, is trying to do its best to stitch itself together and and continue to stay alive and, and do everything that it can to repair, repel these attacks. Uh, but you seem to be gaining ground for sure. Uh, all right, top of the round. Let's determine the order. Let me Plus roll three for. Roll. For the bear first here. Wow, finally I roll well. 19. Hold on one Sorry. second. No, no worries. I just have to do a lot of math. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a lot of math. We can vamp. Um. <laughs> yes, we didn't choose not to vamp. Yeah, vamp. Vamp. Vamp, yeah. monkey. <laughs> vamp. <laughs> okay. Uh, Crystal, you got a 19, you said? <laughs> Oh, Christoph, you got a 19? <laughs> Sorry, what? 19? Uh, 19. Okay, what did you get? Balto and Jasper, what'd you get? 14. I always roll so well on it. 14. Okay, Balto? 10. Not good. The witch, the witch, uh, the weird hunters did, I keep wanting to say witch hunters. 10, 10 uh, The Lord. weird hunters did not roll well. Uh, it's very evident. Um, okay, uh, reverse order for, uh, um, for determining stance. Uh, it appears as though Mercer is no longer stunned, uh, but he's still going to take this, the, the standard stance. Okay. Uh, Ezra is taking the offensive stance. Balto. Offensive. Offensive. Jasper. Offensive. Uh, the Bears taking offensive. Oh, defensive. Off. Defensive. Okay, you're up. What would you like to do? I am going to... Uh... Balto, get back! What the fuck are you doing? And I'm going to... Um... You feel a pouch of ranch hit you in the back. <laughs> <laughs> I got ooh. <laughs> I'm gonna attack. You're gonna yeah, attack. Okay. I'm gonna attack with my sword. Yeah. Pretty good. Uh, six um, plus twelve. Uh, uh, so yeah, it's uh, or six back plus ten actually. So it's six, sixteen plus three, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Uh, 19 to hit, and then yep. 22 for damage. Okay. How do you want to do this? <gasps> Let's um, go! What did you just say, Mercer? <laughs> that's very funny. It's okay. That's very funny. It's all right. Yeah, that's really good. I... That's good. Its jaws are in my shield, and it's open. Strike! It's, it's splintering. It's aggravated! And I, my shield almost like cracks yeah. because of the pressure, and I see the crack, I see its mouth. I'm going to take my sword and go pierce it through my shield, through the crack, mm. up into its head, uh, killing it. You, That's badass. Exactly as you describe, you find an opening and you strike true, and you drive your sword uh, deep uh, into the mouth of this beast, up through its skull. And as it dies, it is going to use its ability, Death Rose, <gasps> uh, to deal some damage. Yeah, it should. <gasps> it is only going to do one wound to you and Ezra. It is unblockable. Oh my god. This, yep, is, this is a wound, it's Death Rose. The, the, the creature it falls off surprised, me. Oh, yes, yeah, angry. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, lashes yeah. out in anger and it slashes at Ezra, and, and the, the weight of this massive bear lands on top of you as, as it, as it, as it uh, is felled, and you each take one more wound. Uh, just one total, sorry. Uh, quickly, quickly! I'm Move not, the beast! I'm, I'm Get not, to Kristoff! I'm not a weak man, but as soon as I see Kristoff go underneath the bear uh, and, and crush, um, I, I don't know if I know the bear's dead. I, I, I see the sword go up, and it's almost like one of those climactic cliffhangers from my vantage point. I oh, yeah. am not a strong man, 
but I'm not a weak man either. I will thrust my entire <laughs> body, my shoulder, right into the side of the bear and try to mm, a nice, pounding nice, against nice. it and roll it uh, as as quickly as I can to try and and uh, surface Kristoff. Yes. Uh, Ezra sees you do this. Mercer sees you do this. Finally, he's on his feet and he runs. And all help, help. all of you, uh, maybe Jasper, you you, you I, feel as though you're gonna. I'll walk over. Is the person on the ground like torn to pieces? Yeah. Or okay, so I it's wouldn't bad. be like try to like like check his pulse or something. No, no, it is it's okay. Bad. It's okay. He's, he's more viscera than okay. Than human got it. Got it. I will try to go help. Uh, what's his face? Help him up. You you do. You help Mercer to his feet. Get yourself he, on your feet, Mercer. As soon as he realizes uh, that Kristoff needs help and that Ezra has delivered the command, uh, he the three of them push this massive creature off of you, enough for you to be able to get up. Oh, out. I'm okay, I'm okay. Oh, I'm just fucking old. Uh, uh, on your feet, on your feet. Uh, you lost a good man. Uh, Frederick was young. Tonight we'll drink in his honor. Yes, we will. Right. Yes. We need to get the fuck out of here. How often do you lose hunters? More often than I'd like to admit. Christoph, are you okay? I'll fucking leave. Not good, though. Can you do that magic again with the glowing and the healing? Yes. Mercer, do you have this healing magic in you again? He looks There's upset no and a little embarrassed. He's he's very clearly tired and he... No, I, I cannot. <gasps> Not today. I am drained. It's okay. Everybody miscasts every once in a while. It's totally normal. Should, Everyone does it. Shouldn't have happened. I put us all at risk. Ezra, we need to move this bear quickly. Yes. Let us. Let's butcher it uh, the best that we can. It'll be easier to move in pieces. We need to collect as much as the fat as we can uh, to return that to Archibald. It's all right if we don't get the whole thing, but as much as possible. We're not going to be able to move this through the underbrush uh, in one whole piece. Leave to me just the fat. That's a good fucking idea. I was about to drag the whole goddamn thing out of here. Uh, and he pulls out a large hunting knife. Uh, a carving knife, if you will. And you, again, you all have your field knives. I have your a field knife. You yeah. would very easily be able to help with this work. Uh, what I would like you do is to each roll a resolution okay. roll. Mm -hmm. uh, and what we're going to do is... Is it monsters? Is it? Well, let's take a look. There's a couple options we have here. I actually think we're gonna go with natural environment. Your choice of animals or survival, if you are disciplined oh. in either. Nine. Please. Oh, jeez. Nine. Nine for Jasper. Eight. Eight. Uh, do I, am I leadership? Or no, that's up to the leader. I don't know. I would say that has worn off. Okay. Yeah. Uh, because the battle has. Oh, minus it's two. It's been it's been gone for. It's that been is very much a, a strategic thing. Yeah. Right. Not so much applying to this. Do role. we think that we need to get to a, a difficult zone? I'm at 15. If I use oh. two boopies, I could bop Let's it. Let's use two boopies. Let's that's use two a very boopies. Yeah. Thing. Okay. So Bolton's gonna be up to a 17. Let me roll for the captain. This is my first lard handling. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I that. feel like I also would have been taught by my lord father how to skin yeah. a bear and a deer. It's like when Tywin Lannister in season one of Game of Thrones, he's introduced, he's season getting, two. season one? Is he in season one? Yeah. yeah. At the end of it? <laughs> wow, I forgot they introduced yeah. him that early, holy shit. You shoot. all get to work, and some of you <laughs> are doing better than others. Uh, but you're making quick work of this. Uh, as you're as you're going through, again, some of you are are able to harvest the the fatty portions of this weird bear uh, more than others. And as you're cutting into it, you you recognize that there's something wrong with the organs inside. It doesn't it doesn't smell right. The organs are off. It's this you you have seen bears before. You've seen wolves. You've seen the inner workings of creatures. Again, some of you more than others. You're intimately aware with their of their biology. And this weird bear is is very much internally and externally affected by living in these in these mists. <laughs> Uh, you make quick work of the bear, and perhaps you don't collect as much lard as you would have liked, as much fat as you would have liked, but you, you get a lot of it, and it makes transporting it back out to the edge of the woods uh, much easier than you would have thought, especially Kristoff thinking that you were going to potentially drag an entire carcass along. I'll help carry big chunks of fat. And it's, make no mistake, this is pounds and pounds and pounds. 
pounds of meat. This is not easy. It is slow going. Yeah. Even It'll be this. hundreds of pounds. I've got a, I've got a tarp around my back, a big satchel. Um, I can take, take a satchel and be able to sling it over my shoulder and you know lean the extra weight on my cane. What helps is you notice that after you've done your the carving of this creature, uh, Captain Ezra reaches into, into his pack and pulls out uh, a small uh, candle holder. It, it looks like a, a little metal dish mm. with a hook, like a circle on the end that you could hold, yeah. right? A little, mm. and, and there is the littlest tiny nub of a black candle. Oh. And he hands it to Mercer and he says, don't let it go out. And he lights what you know to be the remnants of a weirdness candle to help clear the mists Amazing. as you take all of this weird bear meat all the way back to the edge of the forest. It isn't long uh, before you, again, the trees begin to thin. The mist is unusually light because of this candle. As you move through the weirdness, the, the mist almost seems to ripple out around you and Mercer, who's leading the way, holding this little bit of candle and as it grows ever so dangerously low. And just as you think that this candle's about to go out, <gasps> you see the horses. You see the other two weird hunters. <laughs> they are safe and sound. But it is dusk <clears throat> as you leave the woods. It is much darker than it was when you enter. The two weird hunters that are there with the horses and the sled, they look to Captain Ezra expectingly, confused. One seems to be missing. The captain hangs his head and shakes it, and silently they understand that Frederick is no more. You all load up this sled with all of this meat, this lard that you have captured, and it is a solemn walk as you all lead the horses back to the lodge. The captain looks at the three of you and says, Well, if you have time for a drink, I would invite you in to drink in Frederick's memory. Yes. I don't think we got time. Let me see to Kristoff and then drink. Rest. In the, you may even spend the night here if you'd like. In the morrow, the hunters and I will help you transport this to Archibald. He's familiar with us. He'll know we're coming. We do this often. Please, I implore you to stay. I could use a fucking sit. <clears throat> Where were uh. you, Claude? In this general area. <laughs> I mean, basically, you know, it, yeah. it, was, it was 12 damage in a single slash, so I'm kind of yeah. like slashed across the torso. You look terrible, Kristoff. Lay back. And I will go get to work. And uh, I might even have to ask for additional medical supplies. And they, as they, I am going they are well this equipped. Process. They have bandages. They have uh, ointments and salves. Uh, this is what they do for a living. They are not unaccustomed to mortal and and vicious wounds. Uh, and uh, they basically get you anything you need. Alcohol, like uh, uh, cleansing alcohols. Uh, am I able spirits? to actually heal wounds for him at this time, or am I just yeah? Like oh, I, no. If I roll, I, I'm not. I'm not actually able to like reduce the number of damage that he's taken. Am I? Did you? Mm. I don't have the, first aid anymore because I fucked up last time. No, no, no. That's not. That wouldn't be my question. My question is, it, when you woke up this morning for the hour, you rolled. Oh, I did the healing. hour for him. Yeah, you did. Jasper didn't need it. If no. he needed it, then you won't be able to heal him again. An extra point. Well, you but needed you will, it. I did need it. Yeah, yeah. so you've you've already healed him today. Yeah. But that wouldn't stop you from cleaning the wounds. Oh, I would yeah. do the Dressing, work. Right. I just was mechanically because yes. I'm not as fluent with the system. I wanted to see Absolutely. if I was going no, to be that's a fantastic I wanted question. to know if I was targeting something on my sheet. No, you will not just make to a give him the role. additional benefit. You will not make a healing that's roll fine. for this. But. I would still do all of the necessary. Yes, absolutely. And and again, the, the captain is, is has has rallied some of the other uh, hunters that stayed behind, and they're fetching you things as you need it. And uh, you're you're tending to everybody, and, and they have their own healers as well, medicine medicine people uh, who are, are helping you as well. But Mercer seems to be the only one that seems to be well versed in magic, and he is very clearly tapped for the day. Um, as you are dressing the wounds and and 
working on Kristoff and anybody else who needs it. Uh, the captain would uh, ask you, So, where have you been staying in Camelot? Uh, the queen something. I, I would have, well, this has happened, I would have been like, I'll leave you to it. I would have go gone to the horses and, like, pet the snout. See, we didn't, we weren't gone that long. And I'll, like, feed them both an apple, yeah. and I'll, I'll give them a pat, uh, and then, then drop it, uh, the sack on the sledge. Um, and then I would settle back down, get my, I'll take their booze first before getting to my wineskin. Okay. If they're offering it. And I'll lean back, and I'll take the drink and say, uh... We are staying at the Queen's Respite. Ah, that's a nice place. And, and it he, is. He, he does sit down at the table with alcohol and he gestures to it and says, uh, this won't be quite as fine, but hopefully it will suffice. As he has a bottle of spirits and some, some bottles of ale uh, to offer. No wine. I spent a decade drinking sour reds, not much better than piss. So this is very welcome. Delicacy, thank you. Especially after a battle, it just tastes all the sweeter. What you did today was brave. You men rose to the occasion, rode with us, and helped kept keep Camelot safe for another day. It's hard for us to bolster our ranks, so we appreciate the help. Well, I'll... I'll drink in the memory. Ah, oh, fuck! Oh. Careful. Easy. Was the jerk. I'll drink in the memory of old Fred. Yeah. Cheers to Frederick. To Frederick. And they all, you all toast. Everybody in this in this hunter's lodge toasts, and they all cheer. And some of them introduce themselves, and you they tell you stories that they've been on. They tell you stories of Frederick, and they. Some of them make you laugh. Some of them make you feel sad uh, that this young soul has passed so young, but bravely, uh, doing what he felt was the right thing to do. After some time, the, the captain gets up and says, your payment. And he goes to his desk and he pulls out a small leather pouch. And he walks over, at refilling his, his, uh, his cup with a, uh, a bit of, of, of liquor. And he throws the... The, the pouch onto the table, and you hear it with a loud clank uh, land, and he says, 150 obols, 50 each. I, what? Like. You are very kind. Thank you, we will put this to good use. We're paid well for our work. The queen makes sure of it. We're keeping Avalon safe. You earned that. So, so much. That is certainly 150. Thank you. We are happy to for Kristoff to take a blow in order to earn this and to help <sighs> help explore the mysteries of the weirdness. The captain looks at you and says, "That's right, Kristoff, you're a tough old bastard." That's what I've been called in the past. But that coin is going towards an investment on more fucking protect protection. You look at your shield. Look at your armor. There's enough, enough currency here for us to enjoy protection investment and to enjoy More our gold. last nights in it's, Camelot. It's not as much as you think. I only ask, could I speak with Mercer? Of course, I'd, the evening's yours, you've earned it, do I'd, what you want. I'd hear more about how he came to magic. His ability to heal this. Remarkable. Uh, the, the captain just nods at you, and he, he basically tells you you have free reign of the lodge. You've, you've earned your place here. I would take the time to converse with him, and like I was at the apothecary, probing and asking and trying to get a sense of how he came to... Where does this orb come from? Uh, what, is, what is the trick? Is it is it something that he's specially gifted with, or is it something anyone can learn? I'm 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 trying to <coughs> be graceful, but I'm also a schoolboy. Yeah, about it. He basically explains to you that he believes that it is his belief in the All Mother 
that allows him to channel this magic. He knows from the teachings and learnings that uh, for certain individuals who are sensitive to the weirdness, that all magic kind of originates from this mist, from this source of things that people think is evil. But he explains to you that over time, humanity has learned from Merlin different ways to harness the weirdness, different schools of magic, different ways, philosophies almost, of how to harness and manipulate this weirdness. Uh, but he he truly believes that it's his connection with the All-Mother that allows him to be so sensitive to the magics of the weirdness and harness it for good instead of evil. His, his faith. Are, are you interested in learning? How long to take to, to practice? I may not have many more years. It, it solely depends on the individual. You are a medicine man? I have spent my life trying to cure, to heal, to offer relief. In the old country, it was very hard. Here, I help people with rashes. Well, you may be more suited than most. We will talk more. I would like that. And the night continues on. You're, you're, you're trading stories and, and the witch hunter, uh, I keep saying that, I'm so sorry. The weird hunter, Captain, uh, Captain Ezra, he, he asks, May I ask, why are you fetching all of this for old Archibald? Uh, well, it's, you know, it's a good fucking question. It's so I can make a lot of those fucking candles. Uh, uh, if I am overstepping my boundaries, please tell me, but may I ask why? We're heading north to discover the mysteries of the Minia Stones and to save the only people still left living who give a shit about any of us. The Menia Stones? How far north? All the way to Crow's Nest. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm fucking serious. You know many have tried, right? If we can find the knowledge that is said to be there, we can save not just those that we love at home, but also perhaps many villages across Avalon. Well, you are tougher bastards than I thought. Do you think you can do it? No. Nope. No. I've known dozens of men that have fallen to the minions of the Raven King. Maybe since it's just three of us, we'll fly under the radar. I will uh, uh, take my sling and in one stroke I will kill the, uh, what was his name? Mordred. Mordred. I will kill him in one blow. Easy, I no problem. Him. Well, he won't expect death to come from <clears throat> the three of us old ugly bastards. It's the perfect trap. Ha! <laughs> well, I certainly appreciate the honesty. So the plan is to make enough weird castles to make it all the way up to Cra Castle Crow's Nest. That's right. Archibald must believe you can do it. Those candles are worth a fortune, and we use them around here. Well, my guess is he's hoping that if some lucky <clears throat> bastards find what he's looking for, then it's worth a shot. It's worth its weight in fucking ovals. No offense to, you know, your own needs for the candles, but... Of course not. He... Uh, there's a pause as the conversation lulls for a moment and he hangs his head briefly and then he stands up, pushes his stool back, he snatches up the, the, the bottle of dark liquor. He fills up his cup and offers it, silently offers it to the rest of you as if you need a refill. Yes. He pours, he pours, he pours. Yes. He, he holds it up and he swirls it in his cup and he says, well, 
then it looks like we have a lot of work to do. And he raises it up. Cheers. 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 He, Cheers. He knocks his head back and drinks deeply, as do the rest of you. He slams his uh, glass down on the table with a grin and says, uh, get some rest, because tomorrow the work begins, and that is where we will end our session. Yeah! Wait. Oh! Thank oh. you. I knew it. You all receive 60 experience points for the session. Woo! Amazing. I'm uh, adding this. I'm giving you 10 extra because of how amazing your RP was so and how difficult the five. combat was. That was tough. So thank you so much for joining us tonight for the second inc uh, incredible session, the continuation as we uh, march towards our finale of the Tainted Grail. Uh, please use the link in the description. Uh, use this link to go to GameFound and support this amazing game by our friends at Agate Studios. Uh, it's awesome, we're having a blast, we know you will too. Remember, use the link in the description. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.